Good afternoon, everyone. Um, you're all very welcome to planning committee today. It's Wednesday, the 22nd of April, um, and it's two o'clock, and we're in Portslay Town Hall. Um, please can I ask you to uh, turn your mobile phones off, and obviously, we experienced this last time. We're going to have to speak a bit louder and a bit clearer uh, because, of the, because of the acoustic to be heard, but I want to remind you all, obviously, that the meeting is being broadcast live to the internet and capable of repeated viewing. You're asked to ensure your microphone's on before you start speaking. Um, I'll move straight to procedural business. Um, under item A, are there any declarations of substitutes? Councillor Simpson. Councillor Simpson for Councillor Cox. Thank you very much. Councillor Robbins. Councillor Robbins for Councillor Hamilton. Thank you very much. Well, Councillor Kennedy. Councillor Kennedy for Councillor Phillips. And Councillor Randall. Uh, Councillor Randall for Councillor Jones. Thank you very much. On to item B, um, are there any declarations of interest or lobbying for any of the items in front of us today? I don't see any, thank you. Um, I will not be excluding um, the press or public because there are no non-public items today. And finally, would councillors please ensure their mobile phones are switched off? Um, if you're using a tablet to access the agenda today, please ensure it's switched to aeroplane made aeroplane mode before we begin. Uh, in terms of the minutes, I've actually spotted two points that need to be changed. Penny, if you can do those. Um, on item B, Rosehall Tavern, I did, I believe, sorry, item A, uh, I did, I believe, ask questions both of the applicant and officers, if the record can be amended accordingly. Thank you. Are there any other amendments to the minutes? Councillor Gilby? Yes, I, yes, I can't see it now, but on the Tesco's one, I did ask about shopping trolleys yes, and not, you did. not the trolleys um, that they use for, um, with, the, with the deliveries. And it, it's not clear. And if it ever comes up again, you know, it might be recorded that we did ask about the shopping trolleys and whether they existed, etc. Thank you, Penny, if you can append the records. Anything else? No, we'll otherwise agree those minutes. Um, on to Chair's communications. It's obviously um, the last planning committee of this administrative cycle. I'm slightly stuck for words in the Chair for the first time in my life after four years. Um, that time has gone by. We've obviously consented some great schemes in the last four years. I want to thank our officers, especially Paul and Jeanette, Hilary, Penny and Ross, and all in Democratic Services, and indeed the staff here at Portslade Town Hall. I also want to thank all the councillors on the committee and the substitutes for their input and hard work. I especially want to thank members who are standing down at the next election. That would include my Deputy Chair Mike Jones, who served four years, councillors Davey and Kennedy, eight years, councillor Randall, 12 years. I also want to thank councillor Wells, 22 years, and finally, finally councillor Carden, 24 years. Uh, it's been a pleasure to work with all of you and I wish you all the very best of luck in your future walks uh, of life into the future. Councillor Hyde is the incumbent mayor, and can I wish her the best of luck in dispensing her duties should she be re-elected as Madam Mayor. Um, <laughs> whatever happens, because of the churn and elected representatives, this important committee needs stability, and we all need to keep our eye on it into the future. And if I don't end up here, after the 7th of May, can I say what a pleasure it has been to work with all of you. I've absolutely loved this portfolio and thrown all of my constructive energies into both chairing the committee and leading on the study plan. Needless to say, I've spent many a sleepless night ensuring that we got it right, and I hope that our study is in a stronger place because of that, uh, which is all that I ever wanted. Thank you all very much. You see, Karen. Thank you. Councillor Kennedy. Thank you very much, Chair. I'd just like to say on behalf of all members, I'm sure, both regular members and substitute members, uh, a big thanks to you for your chairing and uh, all of your work on the planning committee over the past four years. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Kennedy. Thank you. 
And I'd like to add, as opposition spokesperson, you um, took the committee from me, and it's very... <laughs> <laughs> I haven't finished yet. It's, it's very difficult handing over your baby. As you know, you've lived and breathed it for this four years, yeah. as I did before. But I couldn't have wished it to go into more capable hands. And it's thank you for your Rhodes. dedication. Thank you, Councillor Thank you. Councillor Wells. Without wishing to appear patronising, but I think it's like to thank you very much, Chairman. I think you've done a splendid job as Chairman thank of this you. committee. Thank, thank you. Very much, thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Councillor Corridor. I suppose, as the last longest standing member, I'm duty bound to say something. Um, it wasn't 24 years, I only did 23, because I didn't stand for the year I was Mayor, but we've, it's been a long time anyway. Yes, I would agree. Um, you've done, done an excellent job, and you've been fair. And that's the most important thing about this committee, is being fair and being honest. And um, thank you. Uh, I, it's my, funny enough, it's my birthday today, so... Um, Happy birthday. I, I dip out on my birthday, and this is my last meeting, and uh, my dog will get me full time now, so thank you all very much. Thank you, Councillor Corridon. Well said. Um, okay, yesterday we uh, will move on. Yesterday we made a site visit to items B and C. We've already made a site visit to D and E. Um, is there at this point any wish for any member to uh, pop outside and do a site visit to item A or indeed do item F? Councillor Howard. Chair, I was just going to nip in and, and I'm not quite, I wanted to ask something, I'm sorry, we're out of sequence now. I wanted to ask something about an application that was decided under delegated powers. I'm not quite sure when I should have done that. I think after all your occulations and before you... Um, at the end, okay, okay. I spotted a few things as well and I okay. was expecting questions. So once we've done the majors... Thank well, you. They're usually just for noting, obviously, yeah, but I'll, I'll look to you for your question at that yeah. stage. Thank you. No worries. Um, there are no, no indication of site visits. Um, I think then we just move to the first major item, sorry. Um, this is BH 2015-00320 for the land to the south side of Victoria Road in Port Slade for full planning. The report begins on page 15 and I'll now pass to Guy for the presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Members' attention is drawn to latest items relating to additional information, comments and recommended conditions. The application relates to a vacant site adjoining Victoria Road the site is within the Victoria Road Trading Estate, which is identified for Class B employment uses by the existing local plan and as, a, and as a primary industrial estate for business, manufacturing and warehousing by a submission city plan. The site has been vacant since 2000 when the previous building was destroyed by a fire. The site itself is dominated by hard surfacing with some vegetation to the north and western boundaries. These are some existing views along Victoria Road. Uh, the top left is a view west with the application site in this section of frontage here, and obviously Port Slade Town Hall here. And the bottom right shows the entrance road to the trading estate around about here. These are the existing views of a site towards Victoria Road, um, with the rear of Port Slade Town Hall top left, and bottom right the site itself. And the bottom right slide shows a difference in ground level between Victoria Road at this level here, and obviously the Victoria Road trading estate level lower down. Um, these buildings opposite are uh, commercial at ground floor with residential flats above. The application seeks consent for the direction of a two to three storey building to provide a car showroom with offices, car servicing facilities and workshops. The proposed Victoria Road frontage, the um, top drawing, would be predominantly glazing with areas of silver cladding around the edge. This distance between Port Slade Town Hall and the building here is approximately 15 metres, and a difference in height between the proposed building and the ridge of Victoria Town Hall is about 1.2 metres. The rear elevation would be a dark grey cladding with vehicle doors to the workshops at the lower Victoria Road Trading Estate level. The eastern side elevation would be silver metal cladding with small areas of glazing, with the western elevation pretty much blank, but not particularly visible either. The top slide shows Victoria Road level here with the lower ground floor level underneath the building here. There is limited opportunity for soft landscaping on the site and the application therefore proposes improvements to materials for hard surfaces at the corner of a site and that's predominantly in this location around here. 
Um, in, dish, in addition, some soft landscaping is shown here and along this boundary here, um, adjacent to the town hall. An additional informative is also recommended because some of the landscaping works might need further consent from the network coordination team because it might affect the adopted highway, and that informative is at the bottom of the slide. The proposed scale form and materials would broadly reflect the prevailing pattern of development on Victoria Road, which already features a cluster of car showrooms and workshops and designs considered acceptable. The building would also achieve a brand rating of excellent. The building will provide car parking and access to the workshops in MOT Bay at lower ground floor level, and this would be accessed via the internal estate road along this part of the site. And the ground floor level would be accessed from Victoria Road and would provide a double height car showroom. The first floor would provide the void over the car showroom here with offices to the side and rear. The principle of the proposed use is detailed in paragraphs 8.2 to 8.15 of the report. In summary, the proposal will provide 32 and a half jobs, of which 15 and a half would be newly created as a result of the proposal. The number and type of jobs will be comparable to alternative B-class uses, which are sought by the local plan, and the proposed mix of uses is therefore considered acceptable in this instance. It should also be noted that the proposal would allow the relocation and expansion of an existing business which currently occupies an adjoining unit to the south of the site, and it's this half of the unit here. And the proposal would basically allow this existing unit to be marketed for alternative employment uses. In terms of transport, the proposal would provide an appropriate level of on-site parking with 13 spaces for vehicle repairs, 16 spaces, two of which would be disabled accessible for customers, and nine for staff. The transport team considers this to be acceptable. The impact on labor immunity is considered in paragraphs 8.27 to 8.32 of the report. But in summary, there's considered to be sufficient separation from adjoining properties to prevent a harmful loss of light outlook or noise or disturbance. And additional conditions are recommended in the late list relating to hours of opening and soundproofing. The application is therefore recommended for approval subject to the conditions starting on page 33 and those within the late list. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, there are no public speakers, but councillors, do you have any questions? Councillor Theobald. Um, oh. I was going to ask about the staff car parking, because one of the residents in here has mentioned that um, they could overspill onto the road, because you've said nine car spaces, mm -hmm. but there's 32 staff. Would the remaining have the cars? The other point was it's 20 cycle racks. Does that really need it, you know, for this development? And a third question is, why is there not any 106 agreement on this? Because the money could have gone for the park or something else on such a development as this. Uh, with respect to the first question regarding um, general parking, I, I did conclude that there was some limited scope for displaced parking in this case on the basis of the transport assessment, uh, but that it wasn't likely to be significant and that there were not really any practical measures we could, we could take to do anything substantial about it. The only sorts of measures we could take would be extending the controlled parking zone to this area and that would be quite inappropriate and out of scale to the, the problems likely to be caused by the development. Um, on, on cycle parking, we react to applications as they're submitted. We didn't promote this level of cycle parking. My advice is that it's above the minimum required. If the applicants consider it reasonable and appropriate, then so should we. It, it does meet the requirements of policy. On the question of Section 106 payments, I did re review with colleagues who provide improved facilities such as improved bus stops, pedestrian crossings, sustainable modes facilities. I did consult with them and there were no um, projects in this area which were connected to this development in the way required by the regulations. In other words, they weren't in response to problems that were likely to be worsened uh, but by the development under consideration. So I didn't consider Section 106 payments were appropriate in this case. Okay. All I was going to say is that the park across the way, which could probably have had some uh, work put into that park. Okay. Okay. 
Councillor Randall, then Councillor Robbins. Thank you, Chair. Um, 5.6 talks about flat roof and um, biodiversity. Uh, there's, there's no mention at all about uh, PV or solar panels on that roof, which could be useful. And later on, I notice in 5.24, um, it does say that um, the There's no reference to sustainability issues set out in some of the local plan uh, sections, so perhaps that's something to be looked at. Um, on the Section 106 money, I mean, there are tentative plans, which will be for others to decide, to build council homes on the car park to the side of this building, and I would have thought that Section 106 money might have been useful there. Uh, those plans also include a new clubhouse for the bowling green, but we have to consult on that, of course, and talk to planning. Um, and the other thing that strikes me as a general point, in a city where we have such an enormous housing crisis, when we're building buildings of this nature, we ought to consider putting a, a story of housing on the top. <clears throat> and while it is a garage, of course, the papers do say that there is domestic um, accommodation on the other side of the road. So I think that there could be a case for that. And you might say, well, who'd want to live there? I'd say ask the 20,000 Households have got their names on the housing waiting list at the moment. You might find some of them would. Thank you. Guy, did you have any yeah, response in, to that? Um, in terms of sustainability, there is some additional text in the late list. Um, basically, some more information was received to prove it could meet Rehab Excellence. And although some of it isn't specific to this particular development, it demonstrates they can meet the required standard and it's secured by condition. Okay. Um, in terms of contributions to housing, we can only really seek contributions which are directly related to this development. And the development itself doesn't generate a need for housing, so therefore we can't secure money towards um, off-site provision of housing. Um, and the city plan does identify some employment sites for mixed-use residential development, um, like School Road and the older, older industrial estates, um, but this isn't one that's been identified. On PV? Was that is there anything, sorry, I, um, yeah, sorry, I don't recall from the late list? No, in, I mean, in reality, a, a green roof was explored for the building um, for sustainability, but it wasn't strong enough to support it. Mm -hmm. In terms of PV, they don't need it to meet the required standard. That's what they, they can require it without. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Is that okay? Councillor <laughs> <laughs> <Can't serve> Robbins, <laughs> we'll move diplomatically on. <laughs> Well, I, I, I think I might be slipping into debate here rather than questions, so if you... Shall we just keep the questions just for the meeting? Uh, yeah, just strictly. Is that okay? Thank you. Okay. But, it, it, I mean, I, I really would like to pick up on what Carol said. That was the only thing, so, you know, I'd like to link it into that. Okay. okay. Are there any further questions? Um, I have a question for you guys, that's okay. Um, some of the, the kind of key arguments within this, as far as I can see, are, are some of the employment policies. Does what's proposed in front of us comply with those? And if you go to page 27, eight, paragraph 8.14, <coughs> there's some information there about marketing, you know, a decade ago sort of thing, but, but nothing since 2007. And I'm, I'm just wondering, I fully get that, well, the site has been vacant all that time and, and there's been nothing forthcoming. But I thought the employment policies talked about directly before an application came in. But I'm, I'm not sure if you can clarify that. Yeah, the, the employment policy is basically trying to keep this site for B1 and B2 employment, which is light industrial type uses. This scheme is proposing an, an element of B1 and B2 uses in the form of a workshops in the MOT station. The part which doesn't comply with it is a car showroom which is a sui generis use. Yeah. Um, and I think the, the, so we wouldn't necessarily want marketing of a site if an element of it is staying in employment uses. Because it's not, it's not moving away from, it's not moving wholly away from a B class use. I think the, the report's trying to make the point that we can accept a car showroom in a non B class use simply because it's mixed in with the other uses within the building and taken as a whole the employment density is, is a good thing. Um, I'm just wondering, maybe this is a question for you, Pete. Um, if you go to page 31, the comment from the sustainable transport team is talking about scope for displaced par parking. And it's, I think it's 
related to what Councillor Theobald has said. I suppose that the question for me is, at what stage do transport talk about what displaced parking, what happens when that's deemed to be harmful? Are there checks and balances within the application or within the life of the consent that mean that if you come to a point where there is so much displaced parking that it's actually harming the highway, the operation of the highway, are, are there ways in which you can deal with that, I suppose? Because we're all aware of the parking issues here, and, and indeed, I believe it was Councillor Gilby who said, as we were uh, as we were coming in, that actually they, they have to reserve the parking spaces here for councillors. So that would suggest to me that, that, that there is a large demand for parking spaces. That, that's the context of the question. This, this really, honestly, isn't isn't scientific. If if there were likely to be a significant number of displaced vehicles, I would have asked the applicants to carry out parking surveys, uh, as was done, for instance, in Salt Dean School, to demonstrate whether there was spare parking or not. In a case like this, and I don't have the numbers in front of me, they are in the transport statement, the potential overspill just wasn't really substantial. Okay. It, it was going to be contained within day-to-day -day variation of parking demand anyway. And you've, you've also got to look at the sort of measures we could do, given that this is outside the control zone. Um, the sorts of measures which are available to us to intervene in, in problems like that, they're typically extending control zones, which was done, for instance, for the uh, 1990 expansion of the process of County Hospital. But this is, is simply not in that scale of things. Um, you know, on a, on a smaller scale, you know, if there was a particularly dangerous junction where, there, where people were likely to park, we could look at doing something specific there. But there really actually isn't. I have reviewed the absent record around the application yeah. site, for instance. So, the, you know, it's not, a case, it's not a scientific process. It's a case-by-case -case judgment, although it is informed by, by some regulations, such as those around the way that parking surveys are carried out to give a balanced picture. But, but really, the, the, there, isn't, there isn't a table I can say, well, I looked at this table at this point, and it said, don't do anything. Okay. It's not, not actually like that. Thank you. Thanks very much. Are there um, any further questions? No, let's move to debate. Councillor Robbins. Well, I would really like to come back on this, pick up with what Carol said and everybody else. This, this is where I get most complaints from, about parking from. It's, it's the one area of South Port Slade where we do get problems parking. South Down Avenue is a nightmare for the residents there. Uh, to say there's no dangerous junction, that junction leads into Benfield School. And I, on a weekly basis, I've, I've had people say to me, there's a near miss at Benfield School again by the crossing there. Uh, people drop the kids off at the back. They, they reverse round. As Bill pointed out, that they're, they're looking to develop the car park here. So there'll be a loss of up to, I think it's nine car parking spaces here, at least. I think they're going to leave us with three in the, in the town all here. Everybody knows the trouble we've had getting here today and having to have parking spaces reserved. The, the, the car parking in the park opposite is proposed now that it will be reduced to four hours per stay because it's used almost exclusively by the Volkswagen garage opposite and nobody can ever get in there uh, to use the park itself. So that's being proposed to be, become a four hour parking stay. The parking problems even extend to the other side of the old Shoreham Road. I get complaints from people in Benfield Way about um, cars not be, uh, parking to come to the garages here. Uh, uh, Benfield School has trouble sometimes getting the kids into school because the, 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 the parking problems it has from the car parking showrooms. So I don't think we should um, you, you minimise the parking problems there and I think we should definitely, I don't know, as, as Carol said, there's 32 proposed jobs and nine parking spaces. Um, and again, I'd, I'd like to ask about the 106 money. The park's had nothing spent on it since 2003, I think, and it's another contentious area I get all the time people say to me when we're going to do something with Victoria Park and as Bill says again it, 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 there's no element of housing or anything why, why could, a lovely space like that which would be crying out you'd think and, and nothing in it okay just to come back I'm wondering if someone can help then in terms of Hillary might you be able to help us here in terms of you know is there the ability I don't think anyone at this committee at this point in time has, a, has an expressed an outright view against the particular application, but what I'm trying to do is grapple with the, the, the issue of the parking. You know, is there a way in which you can attach an informative, or is there a way in which we can kind of embellish the application that means that we keep an eye on the issue, or, or that we have some way of 
potentially regulating the problem before it got really bad, I suppose, is what I'm trying to grapple with. Um, well, I was going to make a couple of points, actually, not necessarily about the parking. Okay. Um, though obviously the, the application would have been assessed against the relevant planning policy Indeed, and yes, would have had the input of yeah. the, the council's professional highway um, officers. Oh, so, true. you know, whether members wish to abide by that or not is, 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 is a matter yeah. for the committee. Um, on the matter of housing, obviously the application is what it is. Yeah. And we have to judge the application as, as committee members well know on its merits. So if it, it's for a car, you know, car sales room or leasing facility, um, not for housing, so that's what you have to consider. And so far as the Section 106 in the park is concerned, obviously there are very stringent requirements uh, for Section 106's uh, regulations. Yeah. And this, this application is for what it is, and we can only require a planning obligation of Section 106 if it's necessary to make the development go ahead, um, related to the development, and proportionate in scale. And so I can't see there'd be any nexus yeah. between the application as it is and any requirement for enhancements to the park. So it would be unreasonable? I, I believe it would be, yes. Yeah. Okay, fine. Yes, thanks, Guy. Um, sorry, in terms of parking, at the moment we haven't got a condition on, it's a soft measure, but we haven't conditioned a travel plan for how the, the, the tenant or employer is going to help manage that staff. Works, doesn't it? It yeah, so a travel plan could encourage use of sustainable transport, what the employer is going to do to minimise parking disruption. You, you could add a condition to request a travel plan. Oh yeah, um, at the moment the recommendation doesn't propose asking for a travel plan, um, which the employer would have to submit to us to demonstrate how they're going to minimise vehicle movements by employers, basically, employees. Um, so you could add a condition asking for that. Theobald, yes, I was thinking along the same lines as you, Chairman, about the uh, informative. We've done the informatives before. Say we are concerned about the staff parking because of the area here. It's difficult for parking, as we yeah. know. Um, whether anything could be just an informative. I think Tra idea, the travel was, plan might yeah, help. The travel plan, I think, is, is the strongest way in which we would usually, as a committee, talk about what way we review travel into the future and what way we can actually review behaviour as, as it happens. Councillor Hyde. Well, I'm just going to, I'm not going to be particularly helpful, but, but I feel I've got to um, say this. Why haven't we asked for more car parking spaces in the first instance? What we're trying to do is shut the stable door after the horse has bolted, in my well, view. But it does comply with SPG 4. Well, no, it says it's below the maximum. Course. It's below the maximum. They could have had, they could have had more. It doesn't, it's, yeah, it's maximum. It complies with the, the, the guidance, so... Which is incorrect, of course. We can't do anything about that because we can't make up the policy here and now, can we? So we, we, we live and die with the policy up until we change it, so... I, particularly helpful. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so the suggestion from Guy has been that we attach a condition along the lines of seeking to have a travel plan... As a, as a condition. I, I wonder if members might support that. Okay, that, that seems like a yes, so can we add that condition on? And I'll remind members at the end that the recommendation includes the additional condition about attaching a travel plan as well. Is that? Yeah. Yes. Okay, great. We can move on with more debate. Councillor Theobald. Well, although I'd like to have seen more staff car parking and perhaps some 106, um, but besides that, I'm glad River Vale are doing well. Um, I think it looks quite smart, actually, and I, it will improve the area. So, yeah. uh, you know, I think that, that's looking a bit, it's looking very scruffy at the moment, and um, it will, will look a lot better when it's finished. So uh, I, I would be happy to pass the application. Okay, great. Any further points in debate? Councillor Cardin, Councillor Gilby. This parking business... I live right on the extreme out at my local and when I drive down here now there's hardly a bit of road space anywhere without a car parked on it. We've now become the parking area for the centre of Brighton and what people do is they come in from out of town, places like Henfield, uh, Small Dole and that, and to work into Brighton and they come into Portslade and jump on the number one bus to Western Road or wherever it's worked and you 
you cannot get in anywhere during the day, so it's some consideration that's got to be taken. Since the CPZ moves further west, then it gets tighter and tighter here. But what we're up against also is the county boundary. When you get to the edge of Port Slade, you're into West Sussex and Fishers Gate. So, you know, there's, we've got no control over that. Thank you. Thanks, Councillor Cotton. Councillor Gilby? Thank you. Yes, I was just going to say I'm pleased about the 32 jobs. Um, I'm not sure how many we lost when we had the fire at Bessons, but it probably, probably was you know, considerably more, maybe. But I, I, I mean, that's not the point. Um, just on the controlled parking zone that was mentioned, you know, that, that wouldn't solve the problem here because actually there's either double yellow lines or all the houses along Victoria Road have got, have got run, you know, run-ins. And part of you can't park outside any of the houses. You can't park on the park side of the road. So even if it was a controlled parking zone and people had permits, you still, they still wouldn't be able to park. It wouldn't help anybody. It would just be the same situation. Okay. Thank you. Further points in debate? No. Are we comfortable to move to the vote? I think we should. Okay. This is BH 2015-00320 for full planning on the land to the south side of Victoria Road in Port Slade. We have attached the additional condition about a travel plan. The recommendation is to grant. Can I see all those councillors who would like to grant the application? That's 11. And all those against? And abstentions. That's one. Thank you very much. Uh, we will now move on to the minor applications. Um, we will hear the applications in the following order, B, C, D, E and F. We will hear B and C together and D and E together. Um, so on items B and C, item B is BH 2015. 00575 for full planning at 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20 to 24, 21, 22 and Puget's Cottage on North Street in Brighton. The recommendation is to refuse and the report begins on page 41. Item C is BH 2015 00576 for listed building consent at 15 and Puget's Cottage, North Street in Brighton. The recommendation is to refuse, and that particular report begins on page 69. I'll now pass over to Jason for the presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon. This presentation is for two applications relating to 13 to 20 North Street and Puget's Cottage to the rear 15 North Street. References BH 2015 00575 and 576. First application is for listed building consent. This is for the demolition of 15 North Street, exterior restoration of Puget's Cottage, and retention extension of existing historic paving. The second application is for planning permission. This is for the demolition of the building of 15 North Street and store to the west of Puget Cottage and the creation of a new link lane. New link lane will be called Puget's Lane, uh, which would link North Street to the previous consented Hannington's Lane. The new lane would include retail and residential units, and this application also includes alterations to shop fronts along the elevations of 13 to 20 North Street. The Council's attention is drawn to the additional representations on the late list. The late list also includes a minor amendment to the wording of the reasons for refusal. In addition to the late list, an additional 14 emails and an email from the agent in support of the scheme have been received, and one additional email objection has also been received from Flat 7, 31 Regency Square. This is the side plan for both applications. Uh, the red line here, as you can see, that indicates the application site for 13 to 22 North Street. The blue line uh, shows the extent of the ownership of the applicant, which covers the area uh, for the consented Hannington's Lane scheme. 15 North Street is located here in a central position opposite the Chapel Royal, which is a grade two star listed building uh, with Puget's Cottage to the rear. The site is within the Old Town Conservation Area. Just go through some photographs of the site in the building. This shows 15 North Street in the center position, currently occupied by Timpsons and includes a modern shop front. And the building includes a basement level and a first and second floor. This shows 15 North Street in the context of the adjacent buildings between 13 and 18 North Street. You can see 15 North Street here, uh, which is towered above by uh, its uh, neighbors. 
These buildings, uh, also shown here, are also part of the planning application. Here we see the buildings at 16 to 20 North Street, adjacent to number 15. Uh, these buildings are also form part of the planning application for alterations to shop fronts and elevations. This slide shows part of the inside of uh, 15 North Street. This building is stating in the listing as a 1770 building constructed to local materials with original openings to the upper floors documented in commercial use in 1799. This photograph shows some of the features that are cited in the listing. On the left, we have uh, examples of the panelling. And on the right, you also see examples of the panelling and architraves. And also, this is the, would have been the original opening from the ground to first floor, which is still in place but no longer used. Uh, the principal reasons for the designation of this, of this building are listed in the report. This is the rear of 15 North Street. You can see its mansard roof, and here we see uh, a later flat-roofed addition. And here we see the historic paving to the rear of 15 North Street. This, these are also included in the listing of the building, and we also have paving to the side of 15 North, 15 North Street within the, the narrow Twitton. Turning to Puget Age Cottage to the rear, this building is also Grade 2 listing listed and together with 15 North Street forms a group of listed buildings. This plan shows how, position, how the position of Puget's Cottage to rear 15 North Street, with the, divided by the courtyard paving. Um, you can see here that it's clearly uh, Puget's Cottage is landlocked, which means it's not visible from any, any um, not clearly visible from any street scene. You can just about see its, um, its chimneys and it's, it's enclosed by all sides by buildings. Uh, here we see the northwest elevation of Puget's Cottage. This can only be seen from the roof of 16 North Street. The principal reasons for the designation of this building are also outlined in the report. The building dates from the late 17th century or early 18th century uh, and was later uh, added onto. The building is a rare survival of an old town building which predates the development of Brighton as a seaside resort. This photograph shows the inappropriate bike work which has been added to this elevation. This slide shows the southeast side of Puget's Cottage, and this can only be seen from the, the roof of 14 North Street. Here we see the service yard to the rear of 15 North Street and Puget's Cottage. I'm showing you this because it shows that you, uh, at the moment you can't see Puget's Cottage. You can just about see the chimneys here. Before going into the current application, it's important to explain the background of the proposal, which is connected to the consented Hannington's Lane scheme. In March 2014, planning permission was granted for schemes to create a new lane to be known as Hannington's Lane in the former Hannington Service Yard to the rear of North Street. Permission was also granted for the regeneration of Brighton Square with a new direct link from Hannington's Lane to Brighton Square. This plan shows a consented scheme from the Hannington's Lane, you see the new lane, which uh, connects to Meeting House Lane up here and down here to Brighton Square, Brighton Square here. And you can see here this is 15 North Street and Puget's Cottage, which are not included. The original proposal put forward included a link lane between North Street and the new Hannington's Lane, uh, which involved the demolition of 15 North Street. As a result of this proposal, original proposal, 15 North Street and Puget's Cottage the rear were listed by English Heritage, now known as Historic England. Following the spot listing of the building, the proposal for the link lane was withdrawn from the proposals, and the schemes were granted without link, the link lane from North Street, which you can see here. So uh, currently, there is no lane, no link to North Street from the Hannington's Lane. This slide shows the current proposal. The applicants are now proposing the link lane from North Street, which would involve the demolition of 15 North Street. You can see the new link lane proposed here. Uh, this building here, which you can just see uh, with the number eight in, this would replace 15 North Street and would be a feature building onto uh, North Street and would include a retail unit, a ground floor, with a residential use above. So you can see the lane come through, whoop, come through here to the side of Puget's Cottage and two additional retail units are proposed here within the lane. And then some stairs here at the, at, at the back here would uh, lead up to Hannington's Lane. The stairs are required due to the difference in ground levels between the Hannington Lane scheme and North Street. Here we see the proposed first floor. And this you can clearly see in the lane here again proposed and the building here to replace 15 North Street and Puget's Cottage here. Uh, these 
our residential units, which are proposed above the new retail units. They sort of form a line with these consented retail un uh, residential units, sorry, residential units are part of the Hannington scheme, and they're back on to a, a consented amenity area at the back here, uh, which is on the roofs uh, of the rear of North Street. Here we see the existing north-facing elevation onto uh, North Street. Uh, you can see 15 North Street here. This would be the proposed north-facing elevation North Street. You can see 15 North Street gone and uh, replaced by this uh, future building here. You can't really see here, but the future building has a, a curved side to it with mathematical tiles. But I have a, I have a better uh, picture later. You can actually see it on that drawing there. But I've, I've got that coming up, which shows it in better detail. Here we see the existing west-facing elevation, which is kind of a cross-section. So if I just explain, this is North Street here with the car and the bus. And here you have 15 North Street in section. And this is Puget's Cottage as it is at the moment, uh, which is line locked by buildings to the rear. And at the back here, this is the service yard. So this would be the proposed west-facing elevation. This building is the uh, proposed feature building onto North Street, and you can see the, the curved section here with the mathematical tiles for the retail unit. And then you have Puget's Cottage here, which is, as a proposal, will be freed up and are also renovated uh, with replacement windows and removing duct works, which I, I can go into later. And here you have the consented scheme here for Hannington's Lane. So this building here is not part of this proposal, so that's already been approved. And there you can see the stairs linking up the lane to the Hannison's Lane. This is the opposite side of the proposed lane. So here we have the two proposed retail units uh, and with the residential above. And there you see the lane leading up from North Street up the steps to the, the approved Hannington Lane scheme at the back here. This is the existing rear of uh, the North Street shops. Um, which is basically the service yard, as it is at the moment. So this is what it would look like with the Hannington Lane scheme and the current proposal in place. So all these units along here, these, these have already been approved as part of the previous scheme for Hannington Lane. And then you can see that part of this proposal is to free up this. This is, would be the new access here. And you can see Puget's Cottage right here, the side here. Okay, so this shows the uh, proposed demolition. So the areas in sort of dark red, these are proposed part of this application to be demolished. So this uh, sort of rectangle here is 15 North Street. And also these bits here are also proposed to be demolished, but these are more sort of later ad additions. Um, so their, their loss is, uh, there's no objection to their loss. And the areas in sort of pink, they're also proposed to be demolished, but they're part of the consented scheme, uh, which has already been approved. So here we have the artist's impression of the proposed feature building. Uh, you can clearly see the curve to the building, which is taking its inspiration from existing buildings within the lanes, and it includes the mathematical tiles uh, to the curve. No objection is raised to the design of this building or to the design of the scheme as a, as a whole. However, as outlined in the report, both applications are recommended for refusal on the grounds that the substantial harm resulting from the complete loss of the listed building at 15 North Street has not been justified through substantial public benefits that outweigh that loss. Where a proposed development would lead to substantial harm or a total loss of significance of a designated heritage asset, local planning, planning, planning authorities sorry, should refuse consent unless it can be demonstrated that the substantial harm or loss is necessary to achieve substantial public benefits that outweigh that harm or loss or that all the tests in paragraph 133 of the MPPF apply. The tests in paragraph 133 of the MPPF have not been met. The applicant instead justifies the proposed demolition on the basis that significant public benefits would be realized and because they consider 15 North Street to be of a lower order of significant than is suggested by the grade two listed, listing and to be in poor condition. As part of the scheme, the applicant has offered the following public benefits. The benefits are the restoration and freeing up of Puget's Cottage, grade two listed building. This includes the removal of inappropriate additions and replacement brickwork and windows. Improvements to North Street, including widening pavements and relocating bus stops. Improvements to the elevations of 13 to 22 North Street, including new shop fronts and reinstatement of windows. 
and economic benefits through the creation of Link Lane, which improved the Hansen Lane scheme and the area as a whole. The MPPF is clear that the total loss of significance of Grade 2 listed buildings should be exceptional. It is not disputed that there are public benefits associated with the scheme, including heritage benefits to Puget's Cottage. However, in this case, because of the degree of harm that would result to 15 North Street, the applicant must demonstrate that proposals cannot be delivered in a way other than the, that proposed and that the benefits offered outweigh the complete loss of the listed building. The case of the applicant partly rests on a belief that 15 North Street is less significant and less important than Puget's Cottage and it does not justify its Grade 2 listing. However, this is factually incorrect. Both buildings are Grade 2 listed and both were listed at the same time. Therefore, they are of equal significance in policy terms and the assessment is of significance is up to date. The applicant further asserts that the value of 15 North Street lies mainly in its historic or evidential value. However, the list entry makes it clear that the building has architectural and historic interest in respect of its exterior, its materials, its plan form, its internal features, the brick twitten and yard, and its documented early commercial use. The list entry also makes it clear that it has rare value in a national as well as a local context. In addition, it has group value with Puget's Cottage. It has also been argued that the creation of the new lane would open up a new vista of the Chapel Royal Tower from the south and would therefore enhance the setting of the Chapel Royal. However, such a vista has not historically existed and the Chapel Royal was not designated, designated with such a view in mind. The public benefits offered include the works of the public highway at North Street. The streetscape improvements put forward to North Street would improve the environment for pedestrians and upgrade the facilities of the bus passengers by widening pavements and relocating and constructing new bus stops. These works have been approved by the Council and are currently being undertaken. As the works are commenced, we would argue that they cannot be offered up as a proposed public benefit. Additionally, whilst the works would improve the streetscape, the works would also result in increased footfall, which would partly benefit the viability of the existing retail units and are not considered substantial public benefits. Additionally, the improvements to the North Street elevations would certainly collectively enhance the North Street frontages, but these heritage and townscape benefits are not in themselves dependent upon the demolition of 15 North Street and are not enough to justify the loss of the listed building. The scheme would undoubtedly make the Hannington's Lane scheme more accessible, visible and viable with a clear and prominent access directly from North Street. However, again, this is not in itself seen as a significant public benefit, especially given that consent has already been given for a Hannington's Lane scheme without the proposed lane from North Street. Without the proposed lane, the applicant has not put forward an argument that the new Hannington's Lane scheme would be unviable. It is also felt that the applicant has not fully explored all options for providing a link lane without requiring the demolition of the listed building. The Council's attention is also drawn to the consultations received, including objections to the scheme from English Heritage, now Historic England, and from the Council of British, for British Archaeology. These are outlined in the report. In conclusion, it is considered that whilst there are some public benefits that would directly arise from the de demolition of 15 North Street, these are not substantial public benefits, and therefore they cannot outweigh the substantial harm resulting from the complete loss of the heritage ashes asset. Nor can these benefits be regarded as powerful enough to set aside the statutory presumption in favour of the preservation of a listed building. The scheme is therefore recommended for refusal, as outlined, in, outlined on pages 65 and 69 of the report as amended by the latest. Thank you very much. Um, there are two speakers to this item. The uh, first speaker is Julian Camosa. <coughs> You're very welcome to Planning Committee, Mr. Camosa. Um, you'll have three minutes. I'll tap the microphone when you have 20 seconds left, and then committee members will ask you questions if they have any. Okay, you can start when you're comfortable. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, okay. I have been living at 49 North Street for the last 18 months, and with my neighbours have been intrigued by this historic enclave of buildings next to us, which we love. The Brighton Health Heritage Commission's successful application for Grade 2 listing in 2013 of not only Puget Scottage and Number 15 North Street, but also the yard between them and the side passageway, I understand made this nationally a very rare listed microsite. 
As yard areas and paving are not normally listed in this context, the reason is because this site represents a part of Old Brighton which has been untouched for at least 160 years. My case for rejecting the demolition of Timpsons is it is undoubtedly now the oldest building in North Street, marking the north side of the town in the late 18th century. Its timber-framed mathematical tiled upper floors front facade make it a rare survivor of pre-resort times. Nationally, it is important because it has been in continuous commercial use as a shop since 1780s, which is a rare, as stated in the EEH listing. The street sin is mainly of the late 19th and 20th century buildings, all at this point dominated by the Chapel Royal Tower. The proposed out-of-place and ugly black-glazed entrance tower to the new Puget Lane would compromise this pleasing street scene as it would not be visually subservient to the listed Chapel Royal. I believe most people are agreed that a new entrance to the lane is a good idea, but not at the expense of a listed rare survivor of the 18th century. As RBS Receivers Department owned the whole of this site, um, there should be no ownership problems by changing the route of the proposed lane. I suggest the alternative route should be via section of number 16 North Street's ground floor retail space, leaving with no demolition of the building above, which abats Tom Timson's west side, copying the successful Ship Street entrance to Duke's Lane, where there are shop windows either side. Its length would be only seven meters, meaning the depth of Timson's. This would provide the following benefits. Saving Timson's as a landmark shop to be restored in its late 18th century state, this historic shop would be very appropriate in this new shopping environment which is being planned, creating a straighter lane through the Brighton Square with the ability to see both Puget's Cottage and the rear of the restored Timpsons, creating a great heritage location and also now with its recently discovered 1830s Royal Connection as a good story displayed on the heritage board. And also remember, once 50 North Street is gone, this all heritage asset is gone. I urge you to reject this application. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Kamosa. Uh, Councillors, are there any questions? Oh, Mr. Kamosa. No, I don't believe there are. Thank you indeed very much for your time today, Mr. Kamosa. Um, the next speakers for this item uh, are John McLean and Ed Allison White. sharing the time? Thank you. Sorry, Mr. McLean, will you be sharing the time? The yes. three minutes? Yeah, okay, so you'll, you'll have one and a half minutes, Mr. McLean, Mr. Allison White, you'll have... Well, I'm about to... Oh, Which, whichever configuration, three minutes we, we'll let the clock run. Okay. Okay, you can start when you're ready. We've been master planning this, this scheme for nearly five years, and we're delighted when our first applications for Hannington's Lane and Brighton Square were unanimously approved by this committee. The North Street improvement works are well underway and the regeneration of Brighton Square should commence this summer. But the regeneration of this area will never reach its full potential without the new entrance and Puget's Lane. This application was resubmitted at the request of local traders and residents who felt strongly that a crucial part of this scheme had been lost when 15 North Street was spot listed and the scheme went ahead without the link. Our week-long public exhibition was widely advertised and received significant press coverage. We invited local traders to attend and also arranged a visit for members of CAG. The interest from local workers, residents, businesses, visitors and tourists has been absolutely amazing. The Council has received 330 letters of support, yet only five objections. That's a staggering 98.5% support. In addition, members should be reassured that key conservation groups such as the Regency Society, the Ho Civic Society and even the Brighton Society all support these applications and that they have acknowledged the substantial public benefits that they deliver. Creating the high quality new entrance that our world famous lanes deserve, improving the city's north-south connections and revealing and meticulously restoring the real gem that is Puget's Cottage 
will enhance the conservation area. These are substantial public benefits which do outweigh the harm caused by the demolition of 15 North Street. This isn't just my opinion. We've received overwhelming support from a wide range of reputable groups and the general public. There is much more at stake here than just 15 North Street. This is an exceptional case and RBS have made it clear that they will not appeal. I urge members to be visionary when making their decision. On behalf of Centurion, um, I've been committed to helping to unlock Puget's Cottage, forming a new link lane. It is crucial in safeguarding and optimising our imminent multi-million pound investment and regeneration of Brighton Square. This will create jobs, businesses and socio-economic benefits for our city. 68 local businesses represented by Lanes Traders Group have written in full support, as have the Brighton & Hove Economic Partnership and the Chamber of Commerce. The city's business community is 100% behind this scheme and emphasises a convincing justification for the substantial economic benefits of these proposals. This will only go ahead if elected members want it to, and with significant support received, this is an exceptional once-in-a-lifetime opportunity which mustn't slip away from our grasp. I invite members to ask us of the list of substantial public benefits. Thank you both very much. Councillors, are there questions? Councillor Kennedy, straight in. Thank you, Chair. <clears throat> Thank you very much. Mr. Allison Wright, um, at yesterday's site visit, I think many members were very intrigued to actually get a good close-up look at Puget's Cottage, because of course, as it is at the moment, it's just not possible um, from, from North Street or any other part of the lanes. Um, and it was fascinating to see the progression through the building vertically of the different styles and materials. Um, I mean, it really is uh, a historic building that demonstrates that once it was alive, if you know what I mean. I wondered if you could say anything about the restoration of PJ's cottage and also any possibility that if it's a public thoroughfare, we may be able to draw attention to those who might be interested in the history of the building. Oh, it's me, sorry. <laughs> okay. Um, yes, we're, we are proposing a meticulous restoration of the building. So those of you who visited yesterday can see that it has been, quite frankly, butchered. Um, and there are inappropriate windows, there are drain pipes, there's air conditioning, there are grills and vents, and there are um, infilled portions of the cobble work. We will get the best um, flint guys to, to do the restoration. The windows will be agreed with the conservation team as to which point in time you choose that sash window or whatever other form of window. There's a bay window around on the uh, other side, the back of the building that I think you saw, that we would replace. Um, the roof would be repaired, the fascias and other features would all be um, repaired as well. But I think what you are asking, correct me if I'm wrong, is that I also mentioned on site that we would be um, proposing to have a tourist information panel um, and what we'd really like to do is in one, maybe in one of those blocked up openings is to put a tourist information panel that, that tells the story of Puget's Cottage which is exceptionally rare exception, exceptionally old, much older than Timpson's um, and it would tell the story of how it evolved everything down from the ironstone ballast on the beach to the way that it was a small cottage that was doubled in size when the Prince Regent moved in over the road um, and, and also to explain how we spent all of these years master planning Hannington's Lane in conjunction with Brighton Square, the North Street Works, the connections to the Royal Pavilion where the new crossing is going, all of that would be explained and there would also be two blue plaques so there would be the tourist information panel which I think is a, a public benefit um, there will be two blue plaques, one for the Hannington Estate, um, which we had previously agreed and was only taken out when this was listed, uh, and there will be another one we would suggest for Puget's Cottage, which is definitely deserving. Okay. Okay. Um, I have councillors Hyde, Theobald, Randall, Davy, and Mr. Goyans. Okay. Councillor Hyde. Yeah. Thank you. Um, yes, you, you, you spoke of um, the consultation and you had 330 letters of support on how the local businesses were supporting you. Um, can you tell me what the main areas of support were, i.e. what they felt the public benefit would be 
on this proposed development. And one other little, little question. Have you heard of the word Twitten as opposed to Lane? Twitten is a Sussex name, therefore it's a Brighton name. Um, and I just want you to think about that. I don't know which way this is going to go today, but my personal view is that Puget's Twitten is, is much more relevant to Brighton. Right, back to the original public benefit. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we had, on that last point, we had lots of discussion over the names. Um, we were very happy with Puget's um, Lane in Puget's Cottage was, you know, very appropriate, I think, because as you saw attached to the side of the building, um, Puget School at one point in time was, was actually attached, and you can still read that on the outside of the building. Um, whether it's Puget's Twitten or Puget's Lane, really don't mind. We coined the name Hannington's Lane, um, which we thought was entirely appropriate for the main shopping lane um, because of the, you know, the Hannington's department store. Um, so we're easy going about that. As far as the public benefits, beg your pardon? Yeah. A Twitten is a narrower area than a lane. That's the only reason I bring it up, and it's Sussex. But anyway, that's another issue. Yes. I don't think anyone would really have a problem with that. And okay. it was the old town lanes, you know, the lanes and, you know, so, so yeah, that's not, that's not a problem. So far as the public benefits are concerned, um, we really do feel that there are true substantial public benefits here. Um, if I may just read through what I, you know, because, you know, we spend a lot of time on this. Um, one substantial benefit I think undoubtedly is opening up Puget's Cottage to better reveal the significance of this forgotten heritage asset. I think that's unquestionably a substantial public benefit. Preserving and fully restoring Puget's Cottage externally is another. When this happens, hopefully if we're successful, we can then turn to the inside of the cottage and there really wasn't any point getting bogged down in which architrave, which door, you know, staircases, all of that detail because there's a principle, but we can move on to that next. Um, improving, um, this improves the setting and the public appreciation of, of uh, Puget's Cottage. Um, it creates, and this is really important, it creates a high quality entrance to the historic lanes and the Old Town Conservation Area from North Street. This improves north-south permeability from the Royal Pavilion and the North Lane through the Old Town and the lanes onto the seafront and this is following the recommendations within the Council's Public Life, Public Space Study. I don't think there's any doubt that that is a substantial public benefit. We know from the Tourism Alliance survey that 85% of tourists struggle to find the lanes. That's not my survey, that's Brighton and Hove's Tourism Alliance. And when they arrive, they see that terrible entrance that is currently the entrance to our world-famous lanes. And we want to create something that really puts our, our crown jewels on the map. And when visitors come from the Royal, Royal Pavilion and they're doing this heritage trail and they come south and they cross through the new crossing that could be a crossing to nowhere, which would be ridiculous, that's just about to be constructed, they'll go through here, past this gateway building uh, and into the old lanes and onto the seafront. Um, there is, and I dispute this because I really think that the, the Chapel Royal, sorry Jason, but when the Chapel Royal was constructed, it didn't have a row of three or four story Hannington's buildings in between it and to the south. So there was undoubtedly a vista of the Chapel Royal. It would have been seen over Timson's and the other low buildings for sure. And again, I feel very strongly that opening up a new vista and access to by this crossing of the Chapel Royal and you've probably seen our CGIs, and it might be appropriate to ask the officer to put, put it back up. But there's an, there's an image looking to the north from Hannington's Lane, and we've designed this very carefully so that you get a, a vista of the, uh, the uh, tower of um, the uh, Chapel Royal. Um, there's also, and you're right, absolutely right, that the, the works in North Street are going ahead anyway. RBS didn't say, we're only going to do the work in, in North Street if you grant us consent for this. They, they've got beyond that, that stage, and they're, they're now doing what is right and, and best. Um, 
And so that's going ahead anyway. But I think undoubtedly moving the bus stop and those railings that you stood beside yesterday from outside of the Chapel Royal is undoubtedly a benefit. Um, then the reinstatement, so. I think we've. Yeah. I think we've had a good idea. Well, I've got, there, there is actually a, a, a well, longer list. Well, you were list. asked the public benefits from supporters. So I think, I think you've given a good outline. Okay. Sorry, Councillor Theobald. You, you might have already answered my first question. I was going to ask why can't the entrance be formed from number 16 um, North Street instead, but perhaps that's because to do with the blister going from the Chapel Royal, I'm not sure. Um, the other question was, why is the entrance so important um, for Brighton Square? And if this was refused today, what, um, you know, what would happen uh, to this application? Thank you. Could I start with the first one, and then possibly Ed would be more appropriate speaking on behalf of the traders in, um, in, 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 in Centurion. Um, the, the first question, which was to do with um, why the entrance couldn't go through 16 North Street, it would undoubtedly, in my opinion, and this is an architect, master planner, and urban designer, what we're trying to do, as I mentioned, is to create a high quality, visible entrance to the lanes um, and, and a gateway. And as the Ancient Monuments Society have said in their comment, creating a an entrance through a shop would create an oppressive, an oppressive new approach to the lanes. Um, and I think they said that the buildings above would appear to float over this tunnel. Yes, there are other, um, there are other sort of tunnel entrances into Duke's Lane, but one of our main aims when we master plan this right from the start was to go back to the original lanes that would have all been open to the sky. And so we persuaded Centurion Group, for example, to take down the bridges into Brighton Square. Now, at the moment, you go into Brighton Square and there, there is, you go underneath. We, 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 they lost some retail space and some residential above because we insisted that they were open to the air. There's another lane that we're creating that connects through from Hannington's Lane. And to achieve that, Centurion have lost a whole residential unit. We didn't do that lightly. We did it because it's crucial to creating the right quality environment. And so then to go back and, and create another tunnel at the entrance of North Street is just nonsense. Also importantly, if I might say, is that, that the agents who are London and local agents that are marketing the Hannington Estate are absolutely adamant that no investor is going to spend hundreds of thousands of pounds refurbishing a building, a small shop that is quite frankly virtually derelict, um, and then to destroy a perfectly good, much more valuable shop next door to create a lane through a shop that wouldn't even be noticed, so it would fail to achieve what we, we said earlier, and it would be a haven for antisocial behavior, it would be a bus stop, it would be a toilet, quite frankly, um, and it just wouldn't achieve what we're, we're after here. Okay, thank you. Uh, Councillor Randall. I'll be brief, Chair, if you want. Sorry? I'll be very brief, Chair, just on the okay, Brighton, Quest, Brighton Square question. Um, essentially, we, we as, as all of this committee will um, remember, as it was this committee that, that passed unanimously the, the whole scheme, um, we had a master plan originally, which was to include a link from North Street um, you know, Brighton Square will be developed um, in any case, but I think you know, it's very easy to underestimate um, the long-term public benefits that we're going to have, which will be substantial from having permeability, as in the public life, public space study from North Street into Brighton Square. Thank you. Yeah. If, um, if this doesn't go ahead, Hannington's Lane, Han the Hannington Estate will be sold and there will be a new owner within a few, few, week, few months. Um, the bids are, are due in next week. It should be finalized probably within two weeks and the sale will go through in the next few months. That's for sure. Now, whoever buys it, you've seen the press. Um, 
it's, it's on the market for 50 million pounds. It may or may not achieve 50 million, but someone is going to have a 40 or 50 million pound hole burning in their pocket. And they are going to make it a top priority to find tenants for all of those shops in North Street that were vacated by RBS so that we could go ahead with the Hannington Lane development. That's the reason why they were vacated. Um, and the, these will all be I on. I think you're veering off 15, the subject with respect. These will, be on, keep these will be on 15 to 20 year leases. And once they've been let, so example 15 North Street, 16 North Street, where the link is supposed to go through, it will be too expensive and disruptive to go back afterwards and then interrupt them. So Puget's Lane will stay landlocked probably for another generation. Okay, thank you. I'm moving on, and can we be briefer with the answers? Because this is turning into a speech. Councillor Randall. Well, my, my questions were pretty much the same as, as Carol's about um, other alternative ways of going into, into uh, the lanes for North Street. And also, does the whole scheme depend on this happening? If this doesn't happen, what do you think the outcome will be? I, I think it, it just there will not be a link lane. The Pennington chain will go ahead, but there wouldn't be a link okay. lane. And I'm sorry if I took too long previously. I'm passionate about this. So it's fine. I'm trying to be really fair, but I'm also very wary that councillors didn't appear to have any questions for the objectors. So I'm trying to be as fair as I possibly can be. Councillor Davey, you, <coughs> you're done. Okay, thank you. Mr. Goyans. Thank you, Chair. Tag, um, could you confirm that the, uh, while well, we're talking about access through 16 uh, North Street, could you confirm that the distance from the pavement uh, to the open air, uh, the other side of 16 North Street, is, is about seven metres, 23 feet? The, lo looking at that um, plan, um, I, I don't know if the officer can perhaps identify number 16 for us. Yeah. The north. Yeah. Yes. There we are. And the distance from the pavement heading south uh, west to the pink open air, which uh, is where, the, yes, that distance from there going south west. I think that's southeast, isn't it? Oh, the width of the new lane, effectively, Mr. Yes, if, 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 a, if an entrance were to be through number 16. What uh, would the width be? Are you asking what the width of the new lane would be? Yeah, what would the length of the, length of the lane, the lane which you've described as being oppressive, uh, the, 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 not, not a lane, the, uh, you called it an oppressive tunnel, but uh, if it was an access route through the ground floor of number 16, this is without demolishing number 16, but if, what, what would the distance be through the store if the uh, distance was measured from the pavement to the open air on the other side of the building? Right. To the lane, in fact, or Twitten. So traveling in a southwesterly direction from the pavement, well, I mean, not to the nearest uh, inch, but. <laughs> Mr. Gowen, can you repeat? Can you repeat the query when we get to the officer's query? Because I feel as if that might be a question for the officers. Is that correct? Officers can measure that on the plan. Is that okay? Uh, yes, fine. Or do you have a question for the applicant? Well, that was my question for the applicant, yes. <laughs> okay. Do you happen to have that information to hand? We've never measured it, but looking at the width of that staircase, and the footpath, the public footpath, the footpath's probably about three meters wide, I should imagine, at that point. So it's probably about somewhere between eight and 10 meters, seven and 10 meters, something like that. Okay. 
We'll, we'll, we'll measure it as well, Mr. Gowen, okay? We'll, we'll, we'll get this in the measure. Councillor Littman. Thank you, Chair. Um, yeah, I've, got, I can't, I've got two questions. Um, I'll just say on, the, on, on Councillor Hyde's point, the lane versus Twitten, it depends whether or not you can get an ox cart down it. You can get an ox cart down it. That's the definition, apparently. Um, yeah, two, two questions. Uh, first of all, um, with regards to the stairs, has uh, consideration been given to disabled access? We consulted, in, when we originally conceived the master plan for Hannington's Lane and Brighton Square and all of this, we spent an awful lot of time with Gordon Allen, your access officer, and the chair of the Fed, um, and had several meetings with them. And there were lots of options. One was to reduce the level of the Hannington's Lane. Um, as it is at the moment, you go down the ramp from Brighton Place and you go down steps from Meeting House Lane. <clears throat> we felt that the main lane was Hannington's Lane and it was more appropriate for that to be level from one end to the other. Um, and the Puget's Lane was a secondary lane and how we then looked at the option of ramps, we looked at the option of steps, but Gordon Allen and the Fed both felt that if we did a really high quality flight of stairs and we positioned it in such a way that if you were in a wheelchair and you were in North Street and you looked through to Hannington's Lane, you could see it. If you were in Hannington's Lane, you could see it before you went in the wrong direction. It wouldn't annoy people by winding their way and then coming face to face with a flight of stairs. So the idea is to continue the same original red brick pavers I mentioned right up to the top of the stairs, put high quality nosings on them, nice railings, and it would be done so that it would be a nice feature. And my second question is, it comes really to, the, to the, the nub of what is being proposed here, which is fundamentally the destruction of one Grade 2 listed building in order to expose and renovate another Grade 2 listed building. Can you explain to the committee how that, from a, a heritage perspective, how that can be uh, a, a good thing? In heritage terms, or in listing terms, they are both Grade 2 listing. We're not disputing that, we never have. But please bear in mind that 90% of listed buildings are Grade 2 listed and they can't all be exactly the same. They are in listing terms, but in planning terms, they're not equal. Puget's Cottage is much older, it's exceptionally rare, it's got a much more interesting history, it's architecturally more interesting. Um, thank you, pardon. Okay, great. Um, Councillor Gilby, you're next. Thank you. Well, I think Councillor Lippmann's already asked, asked my question about disabled access because you're saying, you know, you get come through from the pavilion to access it. And I, I mean, I did come to all the pre-apps and, and I did visit yesterday. Now, I couldn't quite see how, what is the difference in the level from North Street to where you intend to sort of go up? And you are, when you go through to start with, you're going to demolish some steps. You're going to keep the tiling. And I know you've sourced other tiling. But what's the difference in the levels between North Street and the, the Huntington's Lane that's already been passed? And why can't you do a slope? We, d we did look at that, um, and it would be technically possible to do a slope. But the building regs requirements are that we result in something like a 30-metre ramp because you have to have a section of ramp, then a landing, then a ramp, then a landing, and it just wouldn't feel like the lanes, quite frankly. We did put that to Gordon Allen and to um, John, sorry, I forget his name, from the Fed, and their conclusion was that it would be more uncomfortable, and this was them, not me, saying that it would be more uncomfortable for um, people to go up this long ramp than just to arrive at the flight of stairs and to tackle one single flight of stairs. And so, as I say, this is how we ended up with that as the solution. Mr. No. Scott, please. Thank you. Are there any further questions? Um, I have a few for you, um, if you don't mind. If you refer to the report, page 59, paragraph 8.24 refers there to paragraph 130 of the National Planning Policy Framework and deliberate ne neglect. When we were on the site visit yesterday, it was clear to everyone 
when we were looking inside number 15 that that building is in um, some neglect and I'm just wondering um, as the owners there why action hasn't been taken to address that particular issue because it is, it is a listed building. Shall I answer that? The, the original survey was carried out in 2012, the structural survey. That was at least a year before the building was listed. Um, all of those props, the hole in the ceiling, um, the damp that you saw yesterday was there, and I asked the agent actually about this, um, before Timpson's moved in, and they've been there for 10 or 15 years, as far as I know. It's just continued to decline. He wasn't sure who put the props up, um, but it has been in a terrible condition for a long time. RBS are perfectly aware that they have a responsibility to waterproof that building and keep it structurally sound. So if, if uh, the decision today is to um, reject the application, then they will have to do some work. But the point I was making is that I can't see anyone going in and restoring it, quite frankly. Um, part of your argument today has been about um, viability. I'm just wondering if you've um, backed any of the viability claims that you've made with, with any evidence in terms of footfall. I suppose part of your argument is without the lane there'll be a diminished incentive and I'm just wondering if you have, if you have firm pounds and pence behind that argument. It's very difficult to put firm pounds and pence. I think we all know that a new entrance to the lane that celebrates the, the entrance and actually announces it, unlike the existing entrance, is almost guaranteed, well it is guaranteed to draw more people into the lane, especially because it's opposite the Royal Pavilion. Putting a number on that is extremely difficult, but this is all part of the wider master plan, not just for Hannington's Lane benefit, but for the lanes as a whole. Go on, Tim. I was going to briefly add, Chair, the, the, the Chamber of Commerce and the Lanes Traders Group um, writing in I think is significant um, in terms of feedback because obviously they are on the ground there um, and trading day in, day out. So. I think that the fact that we had that feedback from them and the economic partnership uh, gave us some um, guidance in that front. My final question was just about, um, I'm not trying to find the item. I'll find the page number, first of all, that's always useful. Um, if you can go to page 61. It refers there on paragraph 8.33 that the proposal would replace 15 North Street with a smaller class A1 retail unit. The square feet, the GIA of that appears to be 19.8 square meters. I'm just wondering, is that viable in terms of <coughs> shop? The agents have advised that a high quality little, either a retail unit or a little flower shop or something high quality in that location will work perfectly well. It would be a fantastic place to have a shop and I'm sure there will be a queue of people. Okay, thank you. Are there any further questions? Thank you all very much. Uh, very good, thank you. Okay. Councillors, questions for Jason, Councillor Kennedy, then Councillor Davy, then Mr. Goins. Thank you, Chair. Um, Jason may or may not be able to answer this question, but I'm going to ask it anyway, and I'm prepared to be told he can't answer it and or it's not material. Um, would the officer's recommendation have been to approve this if the building hadn't been listed at 15 North Street? It's not material, apparently. No, that would be a different situation. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Councillor Kennedy. Councillor Davey. Thank you. So, so we heard this building's been there since 1770, but it was only listed you know, a, a few months ago. I just wondered you know, if it is an asset of such great public benefit, why it was kind of forgotten. <laughs> I don't know if that's a question you're able to answer, but you know, how did it all only very suddenly become are recognised as being of substantial benefit. Tim, maybe you can help us. Yeah, why has it taken so long to list, I suppose, might be the question, but, but that could be as much to do with English heritage as anything else. Um, 
They weren't. Well, I think the, the test in the MPPF is with regards to harm to listed buildings is, is that harm is either less than substantial or substantial. And the government has made clear that in terms of substantial harm, the bar is set very high. So for, for it to be substantial, it harm has to be either complete loss or something that very, very much largely destroys that significance. So if you say that the, the bar is set very high for, for substantial harm, so if, if, the benef if the public benefits must outweigh that substantial harm, then the bar must be set accordingly high for the public benefits. And, uh, and obviously th that is a... And, 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 and that, is, that is the test. In, in terms of why was it only recently listed, um, I, I suppose that um, it's, you know, from uh, when, when the, the list of buildings was last reviewed in 1999, in many ways, the, uh, the, when that review was done, it depended a lot on people putting forward suggestions for buildings to be listed, because um, clearly the inspectors who, does, who do that then didn't have the opportunity of looking at every single bit building a bite and home so um, there's a, uh, I guess from the street it's probably maybe seen as an unprepossessing building and uh, and therefore its interest would not necessarily be apparent until the historic research is done until it's been inspected internally until it's been you know, put into historic context of the development of the city, which um, that it's really the, the historic research that's shown that that's what valued it in, in terms of its historic use, um, in, in the early commercial use of which the research has, sh has thrown up. Okay. Has anyone here ever tried to get a building listed? <coughs> it's really hard. It's really hard. <laughs> Which might be part of the might be part of the answer to the question. You have to use English Heritage's website, and it's written in a very peculiar fashion. I was interrupted. Okay. Okay. Thank you. To, thank you, Councillor Robbins. Mr. Guy. Mr. Guy. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Um, apart from the, the measuring the, the, the distance there, can, can you explain to us the, uh, the significance of the phrase group value, uh, which is used in the report and in the listing mm. uh, by English Heritage, uh, group value of number 15 and Puget's Cottage and the, and the uh, uh, Twittenor Lane? Tim, can you answer that, and then we'll get the measurements. Well, Thank you. well both buildings are Grade Two listed. Therefore, um, uh, they are both of equal significance in in, in policy terms. They're list, both designated heritage assets at the same grade. Um, so uh, it uh, it. They are obviously different buildings, and they, were, they have different elements of architectural and historic interest, but there is no uh, legal basis to say that one grade two building, uh, Easter building, is any more important than another building. What obviously is important in each case with any Easter building is what is significant about that building, um, whether it's architectural interest or historic interest and so on, and whether that relates to exterior, interior, and so on. Um, it, we're lucky because these are very recent listings that they, the listings set out, set out very clearly in each case what is the architectural interest and historic interest and so on, um, whereas a lot of the older listings that we have, majority of them simply uh, list, uh, describe the building and, and we have to uh, use a degree of interpretation, but here it's very clearly set out for each listing what's of architectural and interest and what's of historic interest to each building um, and uh, it's clear that both it, the listing descriptions, the listing 
um, reasoning makes clear that both buildings are, are, are fully justified that they're, they're grade two listing. Thank you. And the distance, Jason? It was particularly the, uh, the value of the group. Uh, what, what is the group and how does a group become valuable? Well, I mean, a, a, a number of buildings are listed, are listed. One of the reasons for listing them can be group value. In this case, um, the, they are listed for group value. Number 15 North Street and Puget's Cottage are listed for group value because of their close physical and historical associations and the way they both share the, the brick lane. Okay, um, the distance, Jason. Do you have a distance there, please? Can you measure it? Thanks. Uh, is this the distance you're after here from, from here to there? Is that the distance you're after? There to there? Yes, that's uh, nine metres. Okay. Councillor Simpson, I believe you're next. Thank you, Chair. I don't know if it's relevant or not. I'm just mindful that if, um, if permission was granted to demolish this building, um, what would happen to the details within that listing? Is that, list, is that actually lost? And can there be some um, uh, saving, some, some documentation of what was there so that we can keep it locally as, a, as an historic mm. archive, maybe some materials, that kind of thing? Is that sort of a condition you could put on an application? I don't know. Maybe you could answer that. Thank it, you. You raise a good point, Councillor Simpson. I believe we did that with the Astoria yeah. application. And English Heritage actually recommended that if we, if we were going to go down that route with the Astoria, that, that, that we would do a, a recording of materials. Tim. I wonder if you can... Yes, yeah, I, I would say we would, if uh, there was, the building was to be approved to be demolished, there would be uh, a recording condition to put on which would require that uh, a brief would have to be submitted to agree um, how that recording condition would be carried out in terms of what level of detail and recording we would require, whether it's maps and photographs and drawings and so on and so on. Um, but, and um, certainly that is, that kind of recording is, is uh, uh, very much suggested as being necessary in the MPPF, but the MPPF also makes clear that the, the ability to record a building after it's lost should not be um, a factor in deciding whether the building um, should be lost. Okay, thank you. Are there further questions, councillors, at this stage? Councillor Gilby. Yes. Um, Yes, coming on to this, the two levels that I was asking about before, um, and I know you've measured from North Street through to the back of the steps, the first steps, which will be demolished and then excavated. Um, but, but what is the actual slope? What would the slope be from North Street to, to the new lane, literally from one side to the other? Yeah, the west, yeah, that one. Because... That looks as though it's, it's like a story high, but obviously it's uh, only an interpretation. I wouldn't be able to tell you exactly what that measurement of that slope is, I'm afraid. Um, but I believe that that's accurate. Um, but um, no, I couldn't tell you what the gradient is. From, uh, <coughs> I, don't, I don't have that information, I'm afraid. Well, well can you tell us just the distance then? Mm. So the width of the staircase might help us understand the height of the steps, right? Mm, it's the height of the steps, really. The width and the height of the staircase will help us. Thank you. 
Right. Uh, sorry about that. Let me just find. Okay, so the total length of the new lane is 22 meters. The width of the steps is 3.8 meters. Uh, it's 2.8 meters in length, and it has a height of 1.5 meters. Is that okay? Yeah. Uh, total width of what of the stairs? Uh, the length, total length from here to here is 22 meters. Okay. Further questions? Can I just come back and say? Yes, please. When you're looking at that west elevation, um, and it looks quite flat at the moment, when you come in from Timpsons. You then get those some steps going up, mm -hmm. and they're actually going to excavate that, presumably to make it flat or to make a slope. It does, it does slope. Yeah, there's an incline. Anyway, it still slopes. It? Okay, thank you. Okay. You have to appreciate that um, the level of the Huntington Lane scheme is higher than the existing level, as I said on our show on site yesterday. So there is a significant difference between the, that, the level of Huntington's. Uh, the new level for that, Huntington's Lane and the North Street. <coughs> okay, further questions? No? Completely done with questions? Okay. Um, I'm wondering if you can help me, Jason, with um, 9.2 on page 64. Your, re your report talks there about how the demolition of 15 would actually cause harm to the significance of Peugeot. So I'm just wondering if you can help explain that rationale to me. Is that because of the explicit thing of the coupling of the buildings? Yeah, okay, so that's fine. The group value, rather, I do apologize. Okay. Are there any final questions? No, he's brave enough to start debate. Oh, Councillor Kennedy and Mr. Gowans. Uh, thank you very much, Chair, and thank you to all the members for the questions and all the respondents, because I think it's been a really useful exercise in airing some of these issues. Um, I think this is a really difficult decision. Um, obviously, there are many issues to balance here, and I feel that um, I'm personally viewing it in terms of macro considerations versus micro considerations for spatial planning. It was very helpful to see the position of the proposed Puget's Lane within the wider scheme of the Hannington's Lane proposals, um, I feel that the addition of this lane will definitely enhance that scheme. Um, and then obviously, on the other hand, we have to weigh up the preservation of the listed building at number 15 North Street. Um, this seems to me really to be a question of, do we preserve the city in aspect in a way and save this building at 15 North Street, which will mean still nobody gets to access PJ's cottage, which is the building of real interest here, in my opinion. Um, or do we seize the opportunity here to enhance PJ's cottage and uh, provide a new lane which respects the historic brain of the area, I feel. That's important to think about the area in terms of its layout of streets, lanes, and twittons. Um, and I personally can't agree, I'm afraid, with the officer's recommendation and the reason for that, which is that the loss of the listed building outweighs the wider public benefits resulting from these proposals, because I do feel the public benefits that will come from these proposals are very substantial. Um, and for me, really, the, this is the creation of the new lane, which will improve access and also permeability uh, from North Street the restoration of the interesting listed building at Puget's Cottage, including the interpretation board, which will hopefully explain to people how this historic building has evolved over time. Um, don't forget, we are looking at it, have, having new housing units here as well as new retail units, which can only be for the good of, of the local area, I feel. Um, and also, looking at North Street, the scheme does include proposals to um, improve the shop fronts and fascias of quite a significant stretch of the retail units on North Street. So having weighed all of these things up in balance, um, I have to say that I personally will be voting against the officer's recommendation and voting to approve these proposals. Thank you, Councillor Kennedy. Mr. Gowans. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Um, 
I think I'm right in saying that uh, Pudet's cottage would still be accessible uh, under the consented scheme for Hannington's Lane, uh, whether this was uh, agreed or not, uh, accessible from the south. And, uh, of course, there are other options for creating access from North Street, which have been discussed. Um, the Conservation Advisory Group does agree with the uh, officer's uh, recommendation here um, and that of the uh, Council's heritage team. Uh, there are essentially two um, elements to our objection. And I might say that, that there are many laudable uh, parts to uh, both this uh, application and, of course, the associated Huntington Lane scheme, which we'd like to uh, uh, draw your attention to. However, the two elements that uh, uh, in our submission here are reported are, first of all, the loss of the uh, listed building. Now, the uh, architect um, himself has uh, described Puget's cottage as a gem uh, today, and uh, we've heard that uh, from the heritage uh, officer, the conservation officer, that um, uh, the two buildings uh, must be uh, legally considered of equal value. And therefore, uh, if Puget's cottage uh, is a gem, so is uh, number 15 North Street a gem. Uh, you cannot uh, have one a gem without the other being of equal uh, value in law. Um, there is also this important uh, concept of group value, which the officers, uh, I hope, have uh, explained uh, uh, to you today. And uh, it, uh, it is important that uh, the uh, Puget's Cottage, the Brick Lane, and Number 15 are seen as a group uh, sharing the same Brick uh, Lane and therefore having this group value, which is specifically referred to in the uh, listing. The um, issue of uh, access from North Street through number 16, I don't think has been uh, sufficiently uh, uh, dealt with. Um, uh, there was some uh, reference to information boards uh, being uh, erected somewhere to explain the significance of uh, Puget's Cottage. Um, it might be uh, considered that uh, such access through the ground floor of number 16 without demolishing uh, uh, the side of the building uh, or, the, or the floors above, for example, which would only be, as we've heard, nine meters in, in length, uh, would be an ideal place to, to, to have these information boards, for example, uh, which otherwise are going to, I imagine, clutter up the, uh, the, uh, the lane which we're trying to, to, trying to preserve. Um, Second uh, uh, part of uh, the uh, Conservation Advisory Group's objection concerns the actual uh, um, uh, look of the, uh, the, the, this black uh, column. Um, I mean, I, <laughs> my own feeling is that uh, you know, such, a, such a black uh, monumental column uh, would not have looked out of place in uh, ancient Egypt um, as the uh, sort of entrance to a pharaonic temple. Um, uh, rather than being the uh, uh, sort of uh, humble entrance to a twitten uh, with, with echoes of a, um, a form of fishing village. And so uh, that, that is something that uh, CAG would object to in the design of the uh, entrance that you can see a glimpse of on the uh, uh, visual in front of you there. Uh, so... Uh, it, it should be borne in mind that this is, this is a loss of a, of a listed building, uh, which uh, is a gem, uh, and those are the words really of the applicant. Uh, if Puget's cottage is a gem, so is number 15. And uh, by following the officer's recommendation today, I don't think uh, that uh, it means the, uh, necessarily the uh, uh, unviability of the very excellent uh, Hannington Lane uh, scheme, which has been consented. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Gowans. Um, Councillor Hyde. Thank you, Chair. Yes, I'll start off by saying much the same as Councillor Kennedy, that it, this is a very difficult um, 
one to call and, and to decide upon, but um, of course that is what we are charged with um, to make decisions. Um, and to add to that, I do basically agree with everything that um, Councillor Kennedy has said, and I will try not to um, repeat too much of it, but there may be a little crossover. Um, now, the report speaks of um, group value. H however, currently, Puget's Cottage is, um, is, is not being able to be seen, um, and it is of architectural merit, and in my view, great architectural merit. Um, number 15, in my view, has no architectural merit whatsoever. I mean, have you, did you see it up on the screen? Um, I, I, I just think it's of poor design and has no outstanding features at all. That said, I do understand the historical interest, and, and I have given that um, considerable weight. Um, the harm caused by the loss of this building, in my view, is outweighed by the public benefit. Um, we've heard today that there were hundreds of letters of support, including um, local businesses and um, many bodies, and that includes Brighton and Hove Economic Partnership um, as well, supporting the application. Uh, the, the, the benefits, um, which was the question I asked, and it was a long answer, you're right, Chair. Um, the brickwork in the, in the Twitten, um, it's very interesting, ancient brickwork, um, and that cannot be seen at the moment, um, but it would be open up and you would see it. Um, we've heard about the public highway and the new bus stops. Okay, that work has started, but it is still, part, in my view, part of the public benefit because it wouldn't have happened without this whole planning application and the Hannington's Lane. Um, Puget's Cottage itself, which is, in my view, unique, and there was some um, stonework there, which I believe, and I can't quite remember what it was referred to as, I think an iron brick or something similar, and that was some um, from 1600. I mean, that, that is of, of massive interest, um, and it's going to be opened up. The um, terrible additions, which we heard, the pipework, etc., cetera, um, will be removed. The, 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 the setting, um, will be available for all to view. Um, nobody can see it at all now. Um, uh, the officer, presenting officer spoke of just being able to see the chimneys and, and that is correct because I was the first on site yesterday and sat on a bench opposite and I actually thought, goodness me, you can see it, but all you could see was the chimneys. Um, so there's no view of it at all really. Uh, I would look forward to the refurbishment and refitting of 13 to 22 North Street. Um, it's just all benefit, benefit, benefit. But again, I reiterate, it, it, there is a loss, of the historical loss of, of number 15. Um, and I believe uh, the, the, the Link Lane stroke Twitten, that's uh, another massive asset. Um, and I believe all of this um, is exceptional benefit. Um, I recognise, too, that 15 North Street is equal in planning terms, and I've heard that said twice. But just look at it, just look at it. Um, with all that in mind, um, I really feel that the public benefit is substantial and does outweigh the loss of number 15. And I'm also pleased to see that um, there is a proposal to have a mass massive investment into this city. I mean, that lower end of North Street is awful, for goodness sake, it is so grim. If you get off the bus there, it is, it is poor, um, and this will liven up the whole of that area and enhance, and it will link the north lanes um, with, with the original lanes. Um, and with that in mind, I will be going against the opposite recommendation, but with, with, with some regret, but nevertheless, that's what I'll be doing. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Theobald. Thank you, Chair. Um, well, I must say I was quite alarmed when I saw the officer's recommendation. Um, Timpson's is much shorter than uh, nearly all the other buildings in North Street, and I think it is quite ugly and it looks odd in the streets scene. It, it, and it's been neglected and it's collapsing. Um, the Puget's Cottage uh, cannot be seen, um, and at the back, it's at the back of a very scruffy backyard at the moment. Uh, this will be restored to as it was originally, so uh, people actually see it, which is, is a good thing. Um, but this this um, scheme will produce, I believe, 115 new jobs and additional shops. It will complement the Hannington's Lane scheme, and it looks good 
uh, for the street uh, scene and uh, introduce the Brighton Square and the entrance to the Brighton Square. Uh, 350 letters of support. Nearly all the businesses in Brighton actually want this to happen. And uh, there will be two not very nice historic blue plaques out of this. Um, so I can say the benefits for this proposal outweigh the loss of the listed building. And I think this is a very exciting scheme and would be great for the city. So I should be voting against the officer's recommendation. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Wells was next. Oh, thank you, Chairman. I don't know where to begin now. It's been going on for quite some time now, this debate. Um, for those of us that were actually on the site visit uh, yesterday, um, I'll, into the shop that we see up there, Timpson's, uh, I didn't really see enough uh, inside the building, or even from the outside, that was deemed original uh, to convince me that this building is worth saving. If I can refer you to page 43, 2, 1, uh, at the bottom of that paragraph, it, it's, it's on the site location and description, it does say that the building is currently in need of substantial repairs. And it was noted on site that the roof is currently being supported, by, supported internally to stop it collapsing. Um, if we could also go on to um, uh, page 4422, um, uh, the, the, the uh, seven, odd, seven bullet points, I know some of them uh, need, need concern because um, there, are, there, are, there is uh, materials in there that reading from this that could be salvaged and perhaps even put into Puget's Cottage when it is restored. Um, as for Puget's Cottage, uh, we saw yesterday, those of us on the side visit, it had been vandalised, and to me, it had been vandalised by a gang of Philistines, and it is an urgent need of rest restoration and with, with more care, which will happen, I'm sure, with the, uh, the care it deserves. Uh, there are things mentioned in, in Para 2-2 uh, that, as I say, could be salvaged, but also in there, there's a, there is a fireplace and a cast iron range, perhaps these could be uh, put, restored and put into our, our own social history uh, museum in Church Street. Um, getting back to um, what is proposed, uh, to my mind, this far, far outweighs the loss of the one shop we know that we're looking at as Timpsons. Um, I used to uh, go to our housing officer, our empty properties officer, when I used to find shops that uh, in my, during my business, uh, we were refurbishing uh, buildings, that um, anything empty of our shop, could, she could look at <coughs> and it would be okay for housing. But this place, is, as, you found, as you saw yesterday when we went in, it's got no practical use whatsoever as far as I'm concerned, not even for storage. Um, I think the development, this development will in, enhance the whole area there, uh, of the lanes in particular, and to me it's a must, and uh, to also be accessed from North Street. Um, I can make you aware of the, of the uh, there were three houses adjacent to the old Druids pub in the lanes years ago, and uh, other, many other cottages uh, in that uh, area uh, that had to make way for the new Brighton Square. Uh, that was in the uh, mid-60s. Um, uh, the improvements, to, to make improvements to the lanes, um, and that enhanced the lanes area quite, quite substantially. And uh, I don't believe this scheme would be viable without the North Street entrance that is being proposed. Uh, what the plans show, uh, concerning this part of North Street entrance is for, is for a great improvement and, it is, and is needed to make the scheme viable. Um, as for visitors uh, I, and people that don't particularly know the area, I have concerns that the shops in this area of the new development that's pro proposed will struggle if this, if this, does not, this has no access from North Street it will be like walking into a cul-de-sac as far as I'm concerned and it will affect passing, there will be no passing trade as such 
and I don't think it would be viable for anybody who would want to lease a shop in there. As for Grade 2 listed uh, buildings, I believe it was our officer behind uh, mentioned uh, the scale, or was it the gentleman that spoke, uh, of just, just Grade 2 listed building as a Grade 2 listed building. Well, some Grade uh, 2 listed buildings, uh, to my mind, warrant listing. And if this was uh, this building, if it was on a scale of one to ten, I would put this particular building right at the bottom. Um, so I will therefore, like the Reason Society and others, the, particularly the 330 odd supporters of this, um, and and others that are mentioned in there, I uh, would more than willing and more than, we'd more, be more than happy to support this because. I think it far outweighs the, demol the, the loss of this little shop, far outweighs the viability of the scheme, the whole scheme, which will enhance the whole area. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Councillor Wells. I have Councillor Davey, then Councillor Robbins, and Councillor Littman. Councillor Davey. Thank you. Well, I'll try not to repeat what others have said. It clearly, it's a, a difficult choice. I think, yeah, it's a question of weighing up public benefits. Um, a, 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 you know, weighing up the benefit of what is there currently against what could be there in the future. And I think to me, the value of what's proposed is, is very significant, particularly when included with the Hannington's Lane development and the Brighton Square de developments. Uh, and you know, the, the cost of delivering those, it seems to me, is, is the loss of what yeah, it does appear to be a rather unprepossessing building that most people, I think, in the city would be quite surprised to discover is Grade 2 listed. And the fact that there's another Grade 2 listed building behind it, which you know, people didn't even, well, most of us didn't even know about, I certainly didn't know about, very few people have seen for decades. And, you know, if they are so significant, I, I think, you know, there is a question of why were, were they not you know, put forward for listing and, and, and until a few months ago. Why have they suddenly become so important? But so anyway, yeah, I think we, the choice of, of losing, the, you know, the Timpson shop, as, as we're calling it, you know, but balancing that against the benefits of the new lane in, 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 into the, the lanes, uh, and I, I think that is a much, much needed. Personally, I don't feel that the Hannington's, you know, I would question whether the, the other developments that were agreed some months ago would actually be, be viable and we would actually ever see you know, if this lane wasn't put in place. Um, and, and because, you know, as was said, said you know, it's, it's actually quite difficult to find the lanes. And, and, and I think many people, when they do stumble across them, are probably quite disappointed. Uh, I know Brighton Square is one of those places, I've lived in the city for a very, very long time, and I've very rarely felt the need to go to Brighton Square. Uh, so sorry <laughs> for, for those uh, who um, have an attachment to it. Um, so, but, so I think this is, viable, is necessary for the viability of the proposals and for the viability of what's there already. Uh, and, yeah, and I think, as has been, been said, the revealing of Pouget's Cottage does provide a real opportunity to reveal a gem uh, and, and, and for us to be able to appreciate it and benefit from it. So I, I am convinced that the, the benefits of this proposal outweigh the harm and, and I, will, uh, I will be voting against the officer's recommendation in support of this proposal. Thank you, Councillor Davey. Um, Councillor Robbins? What? I'm going to feel a bit like a lone voice here because it, it seems to me that all grade two listed buildings are equal but some are more equal than others from what we're saying. I, I, I worked down North Street for 23 years from when I left school up to about 95. And it, opposite this, right opposite in what was then potential buildings. Uh, and picking up on what Linda said, if, any, if, if this end of North Street is uh, what scruffy and un, unattractive, what they've done to where I used to work on the north side towards the east of the, between Bond Street and uh, the clock tower is nothing short of vandalism. You know, they've completely wrecked that. So, you know, we, we're in danger, I think, when we start knocking stuff about like this, ending up with all these bright new shiny lights and everything, turning all the streets to look the same. I mean, where I used to work, there was an independent opticians, an independent record shop, an independent ladies outfitters, an independent wallpaper shop where I worked, an independent furniture shop, all gone now, and they're all covered in, I think, co-op green 
and blooming pound land red or purple or whatever it is. So if anybody, you know, looks at this and says it's ugly, I, you know, I, I just wonder sometimes what's going to replace it. Okay. Thank you, Councillor Robbins. Councillor Lippmann. Thank you, Chair. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm going to start off similar place to where uh, Councillors Kennedy and Hyde were. I think the idea of, a, of an, another link to the lanes from North Street is a great idea. It's really important. It joins together the whole scheme. I have no objection to the design. I think it's actually rather nice. Um, my problem is that in order to uh, have this extra link through to the lanes. The suggestion is that we knock down the oldest building in North Street. And I think that is an appalling suggestion. I think it would indicate we've learned nothing from the reckless acts of vandalism and destruction that tore down most of the ancient old buildings of Brighton in the 60s and 70s. Um, I think we're in danger of doing it again in order to, to, to um, feed this requirement for this lane in order to have commercial success. Yes, we want commercial success for the, for, for the Hamilton's uh, lane area. I don't think we need to destroy the oldest building in the street in order to achieve it. And whether it deserved listing or not, it's not our decision. It was listed. Whether it should have been listed before or not, not our decision. It was listed. Whether it has architectural merit, not our decision. It was listed for its architectural merit. That's not what we're here for. Um, I, can't, I am going to support the officers on this because I think we've got little enough in the way of heritage left in this city, especially in the central area of it, after what's been done to the city in the past, and I'm not going to have any part in doing it again. Thank you, Councillor Lettman. Councillor Randall, then Councillor Gilbert. Thank you. Um, this is a really difficult decision. It's particularly difficult for me because I'm the heritage champion for the city, um, and I was also also involved in the listing, um, which arose really because the Heritage Commission spotted Puget's Cottage at the time that the plans were up for this redevelopment. And Puget's Cottage is, as we, those of us who went on the tour yesterday, is of imp great importance. But I have to say, I agree with Councillor Lippmann. I think 15 uh, North Street is also of great importance. Uh, the fact it's in a poor state now doesn't mean it can't be restored. Um, and I think it does have a real importance. The point that, that Leo made about it being the oldest building in the, in the street is deeply important. And I agree with him entirely and with Alan about what's been done in the name of progress to North Street. I happen to think the Hannington Lane proposals are terrific. I think they're really exciting. I, would, I wouldn't like to think that they would fall because of this decision. And I really do think that the developers might go away and look at 16 again and doing an arch under there. And I, I don't share the sort of gloomy view that it would, it would turn into a pissoir and, uh, and, and become vandalized. If it was properly lit and looked after, I think that could be an alternative. Um, the other thing that I'd rather like, if we keep 15, perhaps we could open up the Twitter next to it, which is, which is you would never get an arts cart down there, by the way, Leo, not unless you took it to bits. Um, it's, 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 it's fascinating to see it yesterday, tiny one person wide Twitter. So I'm going to support the officers on this. But I hope very much, of course, that the Hannington's Lane development does go forward. And I urge the developers to look at 16 and the possibility of an arch, which happens in many shopping areas, both in this country. If you go to Venice, all the, the arches and, and alleyways there, why not try that? Thank you. Councillor Gilby? Yes, thank you. Um, yes, I agree with a lot of what everybody been, has been said. Um, yes, we've, we've, we've literally been asked to value one against the other, and they're, they're both equally value in heritage terms. Um, had I not known that Timpson's was listed, I would never have believed it. it when we saw it, it's in very, very poor condition. Um, the extension isn't original, and the staircase has been moved. Um, but I don't think I'm, I'm not in a position to judge whether you know, how valuable that is against another one if they're equal, of equal value. Um, my main concern, though, is still this, this access and this wheelchair access. Now, yesterday, when we were there, uh, obviously we couldn't get through from one side to the other, and we had to walk round from the entrance or the would-be entrance um, <coughs> to the new lane, and I had to walk up the road. I thought it was just going to be just a little trip round, and I didn't have my stick. 
And I have to say, I had to weave around a lot of people. Um, and I did count the steps. And there were 224 of my steps. And it, to me, that was a long way. Um, wheelchairs wouldn't be able to get there at all, and they would have to weave their way around. But even people who work walking difficulties, I don't know, and I can't really quite work out that, that slope, but I think even if you sort of did make a few slopes without stairs, flat, and that, I'm sure that could be done. I really am, it, because it is quite a distance. Um, and, gas, and sort of, you know, They've actually got to excavate to, to get through, so I, I think that could be looked at again. Um, I am going to go with the officers on this one. Um, at one stage I wasn't, but I, I, think, I, I think I will on this one, um, simply because I don't think I'm in a position to weigh one against the other. I, th I think that um, basically if, if, they're, if, they're local, if they're listed, then they're listed and they, they've got the same value. And I don't think I'm in that position to judge, so I'd rather keep what's there if it is the oldest building. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Cardin. Thank you, Chair. Well, I'm not known for saying too much these days. I, I come to these meetings and I li listen to everybody else, but I'm going to say something now myself. I've lived in this town, Fort Slade, all my life. I was born here at number three George Street. Today, uh, 77 years ago and I have systematically watched this town be raped of all its old and ancient buildings and I've now, people have said to me what are you going to do when you retire well, my fellow councillor and friend, Leslie Hamilton's daughter got me fixed up with something called Port Slade and Fisher's Gate History of on Facebook now I'm somewhat of a Philistine, or I've been called something of a Philistine over the years, whether it's at work or in my attitude over things. And I, some time ago, I wouldn't have cared about this. But when I've looked around and I've seen what has gone from Port Slade in my lifetime, I'm loath to see anything else go. Because this is a very sad thing if they're going to take the oldest building around in North Street. Very sad. And I want councillors here today to think strongly about it. This is our heritage, our life, for our ancestors and our, ki well, and our kids to see, and our children, and the followers on, to see. And it should be there for them to see. There's too much going every day. You look around now. I, I just go back to some of the pieces I've seen going in Port Slade. We had a tithe barn in Port Slade Village, right on the corner, opposite the little group of shops in South Street. Along come big double-decker buses. So what did they do? They knocked it down. And that had been there for years, that type of bars. Now, there's other things. If you walk around, there's ancient walls, flint walls, fall into bits. No one's going to repair them. And I'm very, very loath to see this taken away. And I should really think some of the councillors over there. Um, I've sat here, as I say, for 24 years, and I feel very, very strongly about this and the way this has been today. The gentleman came up to speak, spoke for far too long, and he gave a case which he should never have given. Now, I wasn't going to say anything about that. I sat and I was seething here, because the other people come up here, and they quickly shut up, they get their three minutes, and away they go. But his went on, and he got more than three minutes. I suppose he had more than ten minutes, which is totally wrong. You wouldn't give anybody else that opportunity, and I think it's wrong how that was handled today. I'm sorry, but... I, I had an open mind on this until today, and I sat here and I listened to what was said. And now I'm going to vote for the officer's recommendation, not my colleagues. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Cardin. Councillor Simpson. Thank you, Chair. As everybody else has spoken, I think I'd better say something. I'm afraid I have to disagree with Councillor Cardin. I think the questioning of the applicant was extremely important. It definitely, definitely opened my eyes to to this development, which I think is an extremely important development for the city. I, it, it, will, it would break my heart to destroy a building if I thought that it had such absolute important <coughs> architectural merit. Uh, Council Cardin said that it should be there for people to see. Uh, I don't think people will ever see it. I'm sorry, as it is now with the frontage there, people will never re realise what that building is. And unfortunately, there will be no access to Puget's Cottage behind 
People will never, ever know about that. There will be no improvements to that. And I think that is so important because that is something that will really stand out to people. And people will want to see that. It will be something that they will look at and they will see that it is a very old building, that it's very important to this city. Unfortunately, looking at that one, I know it's listed. I absolutely appreciate that. But to look at it, you would never, ever, ever, ever know it. And so, you know, I, I agree with all those that have spoken in favour of this development. I think it would be very important for the city centre. It will open up the lanes. We need to open up the lanes. The, the entrances at the moment are, are not good. Uh, people can't find them. When I'm walking through the city, I'm always being asked, how do you get to the lanes? Um, and I think it, 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 it's a real improvement. When I look at visually, look at that, and I look at that, I know which one I prefer. And if I was a visitor to the city, I know which one I would be drawn to. So I will definitely be going against the officer's recommendation and um, going for approval on this development. Thank you. Well, that's not tough at all. Um, I think. I think some of the debate here for me is what, why were these buildings listed? And I, I actually think colleagues are missing a point here about what this building looks like. Some actually of the argument is very clearly set out in the officer report. Why English Heritage have decided to list two separate buildings is for very different reasons. And look at that. If you look around you, not every listed building is beautiful, is it? It doesn't, it doesn't necessarily have to have a beautiful facade or indeed a charismatic uh, appearance. Actually, some of the time a building is listed, as is the case with some of the, some of the buildings here, is because of the history of their use or, or, or what has happened there or the materials used. I, I think the big thing that I would say is that actually who would have thought that a building on North Street would have had wood? If you, if you go to page 54, a front wall made of timber but hung with tiles. And then with render of Bangarish, you know that, that that's absolutely amazing that that's 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 in our city centre. I think part of our issue actually is the city. I don't necessarily follow the argument that lots and lots of listed buildings have been ripped down very recently. Actually, I think any time a listed building comes in front of this committee, we all lose sleep over it. I'm I'm I'm, I'm guaranteeing of that. And when I was talking in my chair's communications earlier about losing sleep. I lost even more sleep last night about this than I did about the Hippodrome. Um, because I think we all care deeply about what happens to those listed buildings. I think the bigger question for all of us is, what are we going to do to make sure that these listed buildings are documented and that our own population actually know about these listed buildings? Because it's one thing to say we don't agree with English Heritage listing a building. English Heritage have listed the buildings, and English Heritage have said to us that you have to look after this building and hand it down to the people who come after you. All of that said, I'm still in an absolute dilemma about this. I'm, I'm, still, I'm still actually weighing up the arguments, and I can see all of the arguments um, from both sides. Um, I think some of this is about what is the next chapter for the lanes. If you look at Brighton Square today, some of those arches that are redolent of Spencer's arches at the University of Sussex, those alone have uh, arguably architectural interest. I don't imagine many people around this committee will agree with me, but that was another chapter um, in the history of the lanes. Um, the Hannington's consent that we gave a few years ago uh, at this committee is another ch chapter. So this is as much about how we look back as it is as we go forward. Um, but I'll, I'll, I'll leave my points there. Are there any further points in debate? No, Councillor Robbins, did you have something to add? Well, Mike. And what has been said about number 16, I mean, it was rather offhandedly dismissed as it, well, no, that won't work. It, you know, it will become an social, uh, anti-social behaviour. Uh, but Bill's quite right. I mean, I can think of Tunbridge Wells, Lewis, and um, uh, it, it, Guildford. All had similar sort of entrances into, into to be, is there not a way we could perhaps re refer this or defer this until we could explore perhaps that, that, um, no. that, that thing? No? You, you determine what's in front of you, is, is the ruling. We're not allowed to under legislation to defer things. We're expected to make a decision. Are there any further points in debate from anyone? Are there any points of clarification back from the adjacent? 
sorry. sorry. Paul, did you have sorry. any final um, points of clarification? I just, um, if I can just say a few words. We've had a very full debate here. Um, I think really what, what this all boils down to is committee's views on the public benefits, um, whether the public benefits of the scheme are substantial enough to outweigh the loss of the listed building. I think that's, that, that's been aired uh, quite openly. Um, that is the important point here. Um, I think obviously there are public benefits to opening up the access from North Street through to the lanes behind. However, um, your officers are of, of the view um, that those public benefits are, are not substantial enough to outweigh the loss of the listed building. And um, we've got a very full report there which sets out the reasons why. Um, I just wanted to just, just go through a, a couple of things really. Um, there's been some debate today about the exploration by the applicants of the alternatives um, that could be provided, uh, alternative access that could be provided from uh, North Street through to the lanes. Um, there, there has been a lot of talk about um, putting an access through number 16. Um, as, uh, as part of the application and package, we did not receive any detailed considerations or details of, of that. Um, so we haven't been able to fully assess that. The other thing to bear in mind about the access through <coughs> is that um, we haven't seen any, any details or any um, uh, assessment or whether it would be possible to uh, put uh, other accesses through some of the other buildings in North Street through to the lanes at the rear. Um, obviously, I think that would require some uh, amendments to the scheme which already has consent in Hannington's Lane, but that could be another area to, um, to explore. Um, another, another point to raise is that uh, viability has been mentioned on more than one occasion, um, but just to clarify, the, the applicant um, has not put in a, a viability argument as part of the, of the submission uh, here today. Um, and the final thing that I'd like to say is that um, the, uh, the works which are currently being undertaken in North Street, the works to the, um, uh, to the highway there, uh, which are obviously a public benefit, um, they, um, they, they cannot be taken into account uh, as a public benefit in connection with this scheme because they have been funded, they're actually, on, they're actually being constructed at the moment. Um, so although they've been, they've been raised a number of times, uh, my view is that they, they should not be taken into account as a public benefit, direct public benefit of the scheme before you today. Thank you. Okay. Are there any final thoughts from anyone? No. I think we should go to the vote. Um, we will take the vote for full planning first and then the listed building consent second. Uh, the first vote, this is BH 2015 00575 for full planning at 13, 14, 15, 16 to 17, 18, 19, 20, 20 to 24, 21, 22 and Puget's Cottage in North Street in Brighton. The recommendation is to refuse. Can I see all those councillors who would like to refuse? And all those councillors who would prefer to grant? Seven, two, three, four, five, six, seven, two, three, four, five, six, seven, two, three, that's, that's okay. And we'll move to the list of building consent. This is BH 2015 for listed building consent at 15 and Puget's Cottage, North Street in Brighton. The recommendation is to refuse. Can I see all those councillors who would like to refuse? And all those councillors who would prefer to grant? That means that those, both well, applications we need, have been, we need, we need the reasons. <laughs> Sorry, Mr. Scott, you keep interrupting. You know the rules. Please stop. We have not had the final vote, which would go through the recorded voting. We have yet to establish this, the reasons at this meeting for why councillors are seeking to overturn the recommendation from officers. Do I have a proposer and a seconder with the reasons that they're prepared to outline that reflect the debate in terms of overturning the position from officers? Councillor Davey, Councillor Kennedy, you're proposing and seconding. Councillor Kennedy, would you like to propose those reasons? Uh, yeah, I think he, uh, Councillor Davey and I raised our hands at the same time, and I think that I, I very much agree with <laughs> Councillor Thurbold. I'm happy to defer. Okay, reasons. Mr. 
Okay. okay. Councillor Kennedy is prepared to propose. Right. I, I, Chair, with, um, thank you for this. Um, I would propose really that we revisit the officer's uh, wording for the reason for refusal and basically establish that actually the wider public benefits do indeed outweigh the loss of the listed building. I can cite certain areas of policy now um, which would support Please. this. I would certainly look at um, uh, the um, local plan policies QD 1 and 2 because I do, I do think that the um, visual aspects of the proposals um, are indeed an enhancement on many levels. Um, I would also cite um, HE policies. Um, I, I will be guided on that, but I would suggest one, two, and three um, in terms of opening up access to the public to Puget's cottage and also um, to the historic lanes area. Um, we could also cite SR4 in terms of the provision of new retail. Um, let me know if you want anything else. Okay. We need to split them between the plan and the listed building. We do, yes. There's no composite. <coughs> the, the, for, for the reasons that we need to establish, because th there were actually two applications here. One was to do with the planning consent, and the other was to do with the listed building consent. Yeah. And we need a rationale as to why we're saying that we actually would prefer to grant both applications, both in terms of full planning as well as listed building. Uh, Chair, really, really yes, the thing Councilor is that there are substantial public benefits, and that's the main thing about this, really. They outweigh what we've had in front okay, of us. Okay, so it complies with what's laid out in the National Planning mm. Policy Framework, is what you're trying to say. Okay, sorry about that. Um, we feel as if there's a need for a recess in order that we can um, put together the right rationale. I think we've had a good airing of the issues during debate in terms of the sort of way in which the committee has debated this, but I feel as if we need the policy rationale and the, the, the fallback arguments uh, as, as we would want, as the local planning authority would want to put forward those arguments. So I believe it was Councillor Kendi and Councillor Davey Councillor Theobald and Councillor Kennedy, if you'd like to come with me, we will go and resolve the reasons um, for the overturn and councillors will reconvene at 25-2, 25 hopefully. Um, councillors, please remember not to speak to members of the public during the recess and we will reconvene at 25-5. to 5. Thank you all. Thank you all very much for being so patient. Um, I'll now pass to Hilary for um, the legal reasons and then we'll pass to Penny for the recorded vote. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Um, taking the application for planning permission first of all, the reason for approval recommended by members, by the proposer and seconder, is as follows. The strong statutory presumption in favour of preserving the listed building at number 15 North Street is justified by the substantial public benefits which would result from the proposed scheme. And I have to add, if members are agreeable to grant permission, it will have to be a minded to grant 
and it suggested that the decision on the conditions and any necessary Section 106 obligations is delegated to Jeanette as the Head of Development Control in consultation with the Chair. So that is the recommendation put before committee. Thank you. Okay, we'll now pass to Penny. Can you remind us all, Penny, please, what way membership I, voted I will indeed, Chair. Way? So you're okay. actually voting on this one on application B, which is BH 2015-00575. If you are voting for, you are voting for the proposed and seconded wording, which is minded to agree, which has just been uh, put by Hillary. If you're voting against, you are voting with the officer recommendation to refuse. Councillor Randall. <laughs> that, that is um, against, against, then. If you're voting for, you're voting for the minded to grant. If you're voting against, you're voting with the officer recommendation as set out in the report. That's fine, Councillor Randall. Councillor Hyde. Councillor Carden. Councillor Simpson. Councillor Davy. Councillor Gilby. Councillor Robbins. Councillor Lippman. Councillor Kennedy. Councillor Theobald. Councillor Wells. Councillor McCafferty, the chair. That is therefore agreed on a vote of seven to five. Uh, that means that applications B and C have yeah. been... Uh, Sorry, B will now move to C. That means that application B has been granted and we'll now move to item C. We'll move to Hillary for the reasons and we'll move to Penny for the recorded vote again. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. The reason for approval of the listed building application is the same as the previous one, but I'll just repeat that. The strong statutory presumption in favour of preserving the listed building at number 15 North Street is justified by the substantial public benefits which would result from the proposed scheme. Uh, similarly on this one, it has to be a minded to grant because as, as the committee is minded to grant the listed building consent, the matter has to be referred to the Secretary of State to decide whether or not he wants to call in the application for his own determination. So a decision cannot be made on the consent today. It has to be a minded to grant. Sorry, yeah. I'll read it again. The strong statutory presumption in favour of preserving the listed building at number 15 North Street is justified by the substantial... No, no, no. It's our way to buy. Oh. Well, I've written justified down, so, out, so outweighed... Just to clarify, I will read the second reason again. The strong statutory presumption in favour of preserving the listed building at number 15 North Street is outweighed by the substantial public benefit which would result from the proposed scheme. Okay, we're going to have to do it again. Sorry, sorry, Penny. Can you wrap up that and we'll start again? Hillary, we'll do this again. Sorry, folks. We're going to have to do it again. Just to be absolutely sure, 
On, we're going back to the planning application. Yes. The reason for approval was the strong statutory presumption in favour of preserving the listed building at number 15 North Street is outweighed by the substantial public benefit which would result from the proposed scheme. Right. Right. And the vote was seven in favour of that and five against, so that was then carried. Right. On the, uh, on the listed building consent, uh, once again, the reason for approval is recommended to be the strong statutory presumption in favour of preserving the listed building at number 15 North Street is outweighed by the substantial public benefit which would result from the proposed scheme. Okay. So this is a mind to grant. And yes, as I yeah, yeah, mentioned, this is mind, has to be minded to grant because as members, if members are decided, they are minded to approve that um, application. It has to be referred to the Secretary of State um, for him to determine whether or not he's going to call it in for his own decision. Thank okay. You. I, I just wanted to seek confirmation that the conditions that we have alluded to will include the issues raised by Councillor Simpson regarding the recording, recording. of the, certainly the internal I, features. I think, that was I think that was reflected during the debate. Yes, yeah. yes, it would be. Okay, Penny, would you like to bring us to the recorded vote for the list of building consent? Thank you. That's fine. So if you are voting for, you are voting for the minded to grant, which is just been um, put with the wording that's been put forward by Hillary. If you're voting against, you're voting with the officer recommendation that it be refused. Councillor Randall, yes. Councillor Hyde, yes. Councillor Carden, yes. Councillor Simpson, yes. Councillor Davy, yes. Councillor Gilby, yes. Councillor Robbins, yes. Councillor Lippman, yes. Councillor Kennedy, Councillor Theobald and Councillor Wells and Councillor McCafferty, the Chair. That is also agreed minded to grant on a vote of seven to five. Thank you very much. Um, because we had that recess, um, can we say that we'll come back at five o'clock, please? Thank you. Um, to finish off the rest of the minor applications. Thank you. <laughs>
Um, we will hear applications D and E together. Application D is BH 2015-01175 for a non-material amendment at Salting Primary School, Chiltington Way, Salting Brighton. The recommendation is to grant. Application E is BH 2015-01141 for the approval of details reserved by condition. That's also at Salting Primary School and the recommendation is again to grant. I'll now pass to Guy. He will give us the presentation for both. We'll ask questions on both, debate both, and take two separate votes at the end. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, the applications relate to a planning permission for extensions at Salt Dean Primary School, which was granted at committee in March this year. Item D seeks a non-material amendment to revise the elevations of the main extension and the hall extension, um, which are shown underlined on the plan. The amendment would significantly reduce the extent of cladding within the main extension and replace with brickwork. So the top drawing shows a scheme as approved with cladding throughout, the bottom drawing as amended um, with the red hashed area, the reduced area of cladding. The remainder of the elevation would, brick, would be brickwork. Um, the other change is horizontal glazing bars that have been added to the windows. So that's the main uh, elevation. And again, to the side elevations, the cladding's reduced to just the red area shaded and the other side elevation, again, which would be predominantly brickwork. This is the hall extension um, with, again, cladding throughout on the approved scheme. As amended, the cladding is reduced to the red area uh, above the glazing. And the amended southeastern elevation to the bottom. The footprint and scale of the extensions would not be altered and the revisions to external elevations that are considered acceptable as non-material amendments. Item E relates to the approval of details for external materials. There were previously concerns relating to the brightness of the red cladding, which had a glossy finish. Uh, I don't know if you can see, but these were the materials previously proposed, which have been alternating bands of these two colors, which are quite shiny. Um, the proposed material is now a matte colored cladding for the reduced areas, which would match timber cladding on the existing buildings, and um, brickwork to match the existing buildings again for the main bulk of the elevations. So it's the remainder of the materials, the roof and doors and windows would be as already approved. So it's recommended that the non-material amendment be approved under item D and that the material samples be approved under item E. Thanks. Thank you. Are there any questions, councillors, on either item D or E? Any debate? Councillor Hyde. Thank you, Chairman. Um, it was I who was against a mass of red cladding. Um, I'm so pleased to see that this issue has now been dealt with. This is much more appropriate that we have a mahogany um, and brickwork, and this will now nestle in with the rest of the school and is a vast improvement on what was proposed. Thank you, Chair. Thanks, and Councillor officers. Hyde. Thank you. Any further points? No, let's move to the vote on application D. This is BH 2015-01175 for a non-material amendment, Salting Primary School, Chiltington Way, Salting in Brighton. The recommendation is to grant. Can I see all those councillors who would like to grant? That's unanimous. Penny, please note that Councillor Davy is no longer in the chamber. Thank you. Item E, BH 2015-01141 for the approval of details reserved by condition Salting Primary School, the recommendation is to grant. Can I see those councillors who would like to grant? That's unanimous. Again, please note absence of Councillor Davey. The last minor application of the day is BH 2014-03755 for the land to the rear of Regency Court with Dean Rise in Brighton. The recommendation is to grant. Uh, and I'll now pass to Guy for the presentation. Thanks. The application site relates to an area of land to the rear of Regency Court, Park Manor and Manhattan Court, which are modern blocks of flats at the junction of London Road and Tongdean Lane. Um, the site shown in red on this aerial photo. The site abuts two existing rows of garages and is currently used for informal parking. So this is the existing condition of the site and the shared boundaries of adjoining land. The building to the bottom right is the rear elevation of flats within Manhattan Court. And this is an existing view of the parking area with the existing garages to the front. The application seeks consent to erect nine garages in a continuation of existing rows. 
The scheme was previously approved in 2011 but was not commenced and the permission has now expired. The materials, scale and siting were actually existing and as the garages will not be visible from the street, the design is considered acceptable. The development would result in a loss of five existing trees on this part of a site here, which are self-seeded elms, I think. Um, the arboriculturalist considers these to be poor specimens and does not object to their loss. The applicant has submitted a landscaping plan which would secure a placement planting in this part of the site here, and that's secured by condition. There are also trees adjoining the site on the railway embankment which are of high amenity value, and it's recommended they be protected during construction works. Um, it's recommended that condition six of the recommendation be amended um, to add the text in bold and underlined on the screen. And that's basically to make sure that the development carries out, is carried out in accordance with the method statement. And the main thrust of the condition is as, as was. The garages would be made available to residents of the flats and it's considered that no harmful displaced parking or vehicle movements would result from the proposal. And on this site, the slides at the far end of the garages up here. In relation to neighboring amenity, um, properties to the south are at a much higher level, which would prevent any harmful loss of light or outlook. And to the north, the separation distance here and the height of existing boundary, which is just up to this level here, um, is considered sufficient to prevent any harm. As the site's already used for parking, it's not felt garages would lead to harmful noise or disturbance. Um, the development is therefore considered acceptable subject to the conditions outlined in the report, including the revised wording for condition six and the applications recommended for approval. Thank you. Um, are there any public speakers? Are there any questions? Councillor Simpson. S sorry, I'm just, I'm just um, mindful that there are quite a lot of um, objections um, from, from uh, numbers at Regency Court. Can you just point out, because Regency Court isn't actually shown on our... I can't, sorry, I, I'm looking at the, the map. Do you, if you look at the visual the on the Sorry. I'm, I'm just looking at it in relation to the, to the actual area. I'm just trying to get a picture of... Oh, it's there. Oh, right, OK. OK, fine. OK, further questions? Um, Councillor Theobald. Um, oh, Councillor Simpson. Oh, sorry, it's me. Thank you. Councillor Theobald? No. <laughs> well, I just wonder if, the, if these garages are in demand because all these residents seem to want them, you know, are they, whether... But just, um, you know, are they going to actually be for the residents of these blocks of flats here? Yeah, the applicants confounded rising that be made available to whoever wants them within, that, within the blocks adjoining the site. Okay. Um, Guy, I, I was going to ask, not that surprisingly, really, about these elms. Um, the agriculturalist seems to be saying they're not of good quality, they're self-seeded and so on. Can you give me um, the age or the quality of the specimens? Thank you. And actually, if you have it, if they have a long life expectancy as well. Because if they're self-seeded and they're growing erratically, then they, they might have a very short life expectancy. Sorry, we're just in the middle of this. We'll, we'll happily deal with your question in a sec.
No, we don't have any information about their age or life expectancy, just that it's a poor form. Poor form is, is the height of the description. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Any further questions? No. On this? Sorry, Councillor Theobald. All those trees there, are they like a screening from the railway line? You know, would that block out the sound of the, rail, the trains being there? Yeah, there's also, the, the five trees are in this part of the site here. So all these trees up here are on the embankment land. So we just got a condition to protect them during construction works. Yeah. Okay. Yes, Councillor Simpson. I'm just confused as to the location, not the location, but the, the relationship to Regency Court because it's actually advertised as land to the rear of Regency Court, not to the rear of Manhattan Court, which would have seemed more logical. Um, are, are you actually showing me which is the which are the right places on that? Because that doesn't really bear any resemblance Maybe to, the, the right to the map we've got in the city, in the map we've got in the line. agenda. No, no, fair point, fair point. Basically, the red, red line of the application is just the garage site, but the blue line includes Regency Court and Park Manor. Could you show that on the screen? Oh, yeah. That'd be okay, Guy. Yeah. Yeah. There it is. Yes, yeah, so Regency Court is this little... Blue line encompasses... Regency Court's here and Park Manor's here. So the applicant owns all the flats, or has a freehold interest probably yeah. in all the flats within Regency Court and Park Manor. So it's connected to Regency, not Manhattan, through land ownership. So, I mean, I suppose in reality, the address could refer to the rear of any one of these blocks. Is that okay? Okay. Any further final questions? No? Any points in debate? No? No point in debate? Okay, let's move to the vote. This is BH 2014-03755 for full planning on the land to the rear of Regency Court and with Dean Rise and Brighton. The recommendation is to grant. Can I solve this, Councillors, who would like to grant? Ten. And all those who would prefer to refuse? And any abstention? Well, that's one. Okay. That completes the minor applications, but Councillor Hyde, you had wanted to raise something under one yeah, of the delegated yeah. reports that we would otherwise note today. Thank you, Chair. Um, on page 163, I noticed there's been an application which has been um, approved on the cafe adjacent to Peter Pan's playground, Madeira Drive, Brighton. Well, I just wondered, um, I would have, well, I would have thought that might have come to committee because it's on our seafront, but I appreciate that during the consultation process, there's nobody who actually lives there, is there? Um, and uh, this raises a question for me. Um, perhaps I should have seen it on the weekly list and brought it to the attention, but I was just surprised to see that that was under delegated. Maybe I'm wrong, but I just, I've raised it. That's it. Yeah. Thank well, you. If it's mm -hmm. small enough, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's but geographically small enough, so it would yeah. be delegated unless you had your neighbour rep yeah. or your councillor rep. Yeah. So yeah, that's fine, that's fine. But well, oh, take I just your point, thought, oh, and it's yeah. a very good reminder that we all need to keep our eye it on the weekly list. indeed, and I usually do, I do every week, actually, but I must have missed that one. <laughs> okay, is there anything else on those? No, the remaining items are for noting only. Thank you all very much indeed. It's 20 past five. I'm now calling my last planning committee to an end. Thank you all.